Never. Are we live? Yes. Did it take me 800 episodes to put my camera onto a camera stand that won't get knocked over by a cat? Yes, it did. Yes, yes, it did. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hey, oh. We are uh, testing a few things. Justin has a microphone set up that he's fiddling with. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, look, he's got a microphone over his head. He hasn't had that in a while. Yeah, this just I try to get it right between me and the camera. Perfect. Yeah, right, at, right at in front best, of your face. That's good. That's good. <laughs> it's perfect. Okay. No, Apple iTunes, you are causing me <sighs> trauma. Trombone? Trombones? No trombones. Um, let's see. What do I need to do before the show actually starts? Before we do it, I just wanted to go live because we needed to be live so that we could go live on all the places and and not lose our streams and have to re uh, redo them again. Oh, what are we going to fill people's heads with today? That's what I have to put in here. Uh... Um, yeah, we're going to okay, have I got all it. sorts of. Uh... I got it. I got it. Okay, doing a, a last minute. We already kind of did this, but uh, everything sounds good. Uh, this is a new setup. Uh, I look semi-professional, not all professional hot rod. I'm only halfway there. Uh, Eric Nake says it sounds good. Oh, nice. Okay. Sound check. Uh, apparently worked. All right. Keep talking, Justin. I want to hear you talk a little bit more. Uh, let's, I can, uh, I can talk, uh, uh mike if there's uh, anybody named mike here would you please stand up anybody named mike nope okay mike check completed that's a terrible joke that's my headphones i'm hearing a little tap tap thing and it's my headphones because they're thing i got i got issues always got some kind of technological issue with the technology <laughs> Yes, Bear's wearing a tie. This is really annoying. Hot Rod, you guessed right. <laughs> well, if you wanted to know anything about high school Blair, it was giant thick plastic glasses that kind of went up at the corner like a cat eye and ties. That was a thing that I did. Oh, and giant bell bottoms and motorcycle wait, boots. Wait, were you born so, in like bell 19... Bottoms. Were you in, wait, in high school? Was this yeah. 1979? Yeah. 78, 79, right into age, like somewhere in between. I definitely there. had wanted to be alive in the, the 70s when I was in high school. Yeah. yeah, well, as we discussed last week, I also had a beaded curtain and several lava yeah. lamps and a black light with black light posters. Oh, so crazy. I, yeah, I was, I was into the whole thing. Yeah. You were into uh, everything retro. All Identity at once. 4 a says that you. Retro. Blair, you're louder than uh, both of us. That's oh, I can hear. I can change can my. Can you turn down? I cannot turn down. I can do this. How's that? Uh, no. Are we equal? How about this? How about that? No, no, no. no. Go back to the no. first one. Okay, first one. That's all I have. I'm sorry. No, do the second one. <laughs> the second one? Justin said no to the second one. Is it too quiet? Yeah, it sounds like she's talking from inside the closet. Oh, no. <laughs> It does. Yeah. All right. The first one's probably the best. Okay. That's all I got. I don't want to turn mine up because I've got some kind of noise. I can always get rid of it in post, I guess. But I don't like it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> All right, we're live. Uh, well, this is, we should start the show. You know, 800 episodes has made me very tired. No, no, oh, no, no. no. You, can be, you can be tired tomorrow. You can be tired after you die. This is not, This right now we're doing a show. Let's do it. Let's bring it. Let's do a Five show. Five minutes in. 
Anybody tuning in for the first time, there is a show associated with this. There, it's not just going, oh, can you hear me now? What? Is this thing could on? Be. Could be. We do what we want around here. We don't care what the YouTubers like and don't like. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that, Kiki. <laughs> Uh, I need a. Maybe we have. Ladies a and gentlemen. Let's my opening. I'm opening things. Yes, let's start the show. I can do some of these things as we go. All right. Just like that. I think we should cheer after you say this is our 800th episode. The very beginning. Maybe Yay! Okay. I didn't want to interrupt you to do it, so I wanted to warn you I was going to do it. So you're not like, hey! <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'm just going to do, do it do. anyway, Kiki. I'm going to do what I want. Okay. I am going to do what I want, which is to start the show. Hooray. Start the show. Um, Identity 4 wants Justin to be louder. Have we done That's that That's quite easily accomplished. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Don't need to ask me twice. <laughs> there you go. All right. We will start the show in a three, in a two. I hit the wrong button. There we go. This is Twist. This Week in Science, episode number 800, recorded on Wednesday, November 18th, 2020. This is our 800th podcast episode. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Uh oh. Woo! And the crowd goes wild. I'm Dr. Kiki, and today we will fill your head with long necks, tubes, and parasites. But first. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Science! Uh, is how you're now hearing this. Uh, what you watch things on, why you can see at night, how you keep warm in the winter, cool in the summer. Science is how appliances work, how vehicles work, why airplanes are a thing, and what computer programs are made of. Science, it's what doctors study. It's the thing behind food safety, medicine, vaccines, health recommendations, operations, therapies, and cures. Where are you when you use your GPS to navigate? Relativity speaking, you are smack dab in the middle of science. That's where we talk about science from time to time here in this space. Results from across the scientific disciplines around the world and beyond. In the short time that we've been doing this show, a staggering yet believable number of studies have illuminated our world with new information. Cosmic questions asked and answered. Data captured from stars, black holes, supernovas, dark matter, gravity waves, bosons, and neutrinos galore. Data in such quantities we barely have the means to store, let alone analyze what we have found. A next generation, the new appreciation of space exploration has only just begun to lead the way into frontiers long imagined. We have unearthed fossils, decoded DNA, and found unexpected artifacts, giving glimpses into our past, trading out old fables of how we came to be for evidence-based understanding of who we actually are. The struggle, not just of humanity, but of all life, to survive, adapt, evolve, and persist among the stars. There were amazing observations of our animal friends, always smarter than we, they, we thought they were, often more complex than we could have guessed, the living examples of successful evolution all around us. And we have watched the warnings of scientists go unheeded in addressing global climate change, in pandemic precautions, and the results of our heedlessness plays out in predictable ways. With so much science all around us, with so much coming our way, there's no wonder why we can't stop talking about it here on This Week in Science, coming up next. Is that the no oops? It sounds oops. Did I get the wrong it? song? Did I get the wrong song? Was that the original From song? 2005. Okay, yeah. I'll get it right this time, everyone. 
We have the right song coming up. That was a throwback. <laughs> it was a throwback. <laughs> The kind of mind that can't get enough I wanna learn everything I wanna fill it all up With new discoveries that happen Every day of the week There's only one place to go To find the knowledge I seek I wanna know And a good science to you too, Justin Blair and everyone out there. Welcome to another episode of This Week in Science. And, oh yeah, it is episode 200. No. Episode, <laughs> no. No, 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 800, 800. That was 800? Six, no. I must have lost episodes. count somewhere in there. Yeah. <laughs> must have. Uh... You're keeping track. 800 episodes at one a week is at least five years we've been doing this. At the very least, I'm not good with the math. At so least five years. Your remainder, but yeah. yeah in fact, it years. takes us back to about here. Good morning. Welcome to this week in science, and we are here living on the science tip. Morning, Kirsten. Morning, Justin. We are here bringing you more science for another hour on KDVS. And we've got lots of great stuff for you this morning. We've got an interview at 9 o'clock with Dorothy Geetson from UC Davis. She is a researcher in the nutrition hopefully she area can, of nutrition. Hopefully she can dispel a myth. Well, I hope Urban she can. Like I hope that. she can. She's going to be dispelling a lot of... Well, disseminating a lot of wonderful information about your diet and what she's learned from mice and rats and how it might be able to... Which uh, aren't really a big part of my diet. No, not mine either. It's not lately. Um, anyway, you can join us. Down anyway, and this wow. was about the time. People? Yeah, who those were those people? Those, those young <laughs> voices. Those unfamiliar. incredibly young voices that in this episode said oh who to thunk it anyway we have a great show for you and we just um we should just get down right to it because we've got a lot of stuff to get to a lot in of the news next... this week yeah a lot of news there's always a lot of news yeah but more always. so this week um what's the first oh the first thing i wanted to go over to talk about was the fact that we're podcasting now podcasting what's a podcast what's a podcast well <laughs> a podcast is um, we've packaged our recorded shows on the web so that people can download them very easily. We've always had them up on our website as MP3 files that could be downloaded. But with podcasting, you you can basically, people can subscribe to our website, more or less, and instantly their computer will just, you know, kind of check for updates Automatic every now and updating. again. Automatic updating. Idea. Yeah, so they won't actually have to, like, personally come to our website. They just subscribe to it. For the podcast, this week in science what podcast, is this, and you automatically can download. <laughs> and then they don't have to wake up this early. And then they don't have to wake up this early. And we used to get up early in the morning to do this show. Now we stay up a little bit late. But oh yeah, 2005. This was March wow. of 2005, and I believe in, I go on to talk about in this segment about how the previous episode in which we had interviewed Brian Green on his string theory stuff. It we had uh we had had 750 downloads <gasps> of that one episode and it was very very exciting, very exciting. I, I I made I made sure to distinguish between people downloading MP3s directly from the website and those that were from podcast subscriptions. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Yes. Oh, what's a podcast? That was a great question. Yeah, my Justin. understanding of the interwebs has not in increased very much over these, <laughs> these years. Well, like those episodes from 2005, way back when we began podcasting and embarked on the podcasting adventure, 
We were bringing science stories and interviews week after week after week. It was just me and Justin at that time. Now we have Blair, and we've had Blair on the show as a co-host. Hey, (laughs) for a very long time. And we have had so many listeners through the years, so many audience members, and some of you are now joining us right now live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch. Hello to everyone who's watching us live right now. Those of you who are in the chat room, hello. Thank you for being here with us for this celebration, for this episode, for us to talk about science, because we have good science for you tonight, just like we always have. I have stories about, what do I have? I've got some long necks. I've got some geoengineered nope, and uh, also some COVID news, because that's, you know, I always have to be Debbie Debbie Downer and bring you the COVID news. So that's what I got for you. I mean, we're a buzz. science podcast, so science I feel podcast. like if, if people up, can't down, trust up, us for down. the real stuff yep. on on this weird topic, yeah, I'm bring glad you're all. doing it. I'm yeah. bringing it all in there. Justin, what did you bring? So uh, COVID is a small virus. I'm bringing giant viruses, ancient awesome. Americans and lava tubes, secrets of owl feathers, and just because you're paranoid don't mean your vacuum cleaner ain't eavesdropping on. Oh, Maybe what? your vacuum cleaner. Mine is very cheap. <laughs> <laughs> My vacuum cleaner is just never mind. Okay, Blair, what's in the yeah. animal corner? Oh, I brought some um, eavesdropping monkeys. Actually, uh, I brought uh, dog sensitivities. I brought uh, chirping birds and just some of the grossest parasites you've ever heard of. Oh, You're welcome. Wow. We've right? covered so many parasites and gross Who's ones on this actor? show. I'm actually pretty terrified. I'll that. tell you, I had trouble <laughs> looking at the pictures, which oh. I had trouble looking at yeah. the pictures. So yeah, and you're the one that teaser. introduced me to uh, right. traumatic insemination. Yeah. And so oh, weren't right. those the days? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> when I first learned about bed bugs, my goodness this well, is a special terrifying. day in my life oh thanks so much for that donation wall street tech that is very appreciated and as we jump into the show and into all these science stories of our 800th episode i would like to let you know that if you are not yet subscribed to this week in science you can subscribe to us by finding us places where we are. We are on the, all the platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch. We're on the podcast platforms, Google, Apple, Pandora, Spotify, Spreaker, Radio.com, TuneIn. Go to the places. Look for This Week in Science. And you'll probably find us. You can subscribe and get us downloaded by your computers every week without actually having to go to our website. I don't know. I don't know if I said it like I did back in 2005. Anyway, you can also visit twist.org if you want. It's now time for the science. So let's talk about long necks. I'm I'm trying to stretch my neck and make my neck longer. And I don't know. I don't know how I can do it. What if I wanted to get a longer neck? How would I do it? Well, apparently some dinosaurs got longer necks because of global climate change. How so? Yeah, it's very... We don't know exactly exactly how it happened, but researchers looking... uh, Researchers from Ludwig Maximilians University and the Bayerische Straßhundslung for paleontology, I cannot do German. German, I am sorry. That's and fine. geology now report evidence on why sauropods may have evolved from all of their ancestors round about 180 million years ago. They were looking at a bunch of fossils in an area of Argentinian Patagonia called Chubut. And in Chubut, they found a lot of sauropod fossils. Also, they were able to discover very well stratified layers of ground so they could actually determine the timing and the ecological conditions that were present when those sauropod sauropod bones were laid down. 
in doing that, they were able to precise, precisely date these sauropod fossils to 179 million years ago. And there were not any sauropods before then. And then there weren't any other of the sauropod family of dinosaurs after then. It was like something happened and the long necks took over and the other ones died out. So what they saw in the strata that they were looking at, they discovered that the climate changed from temperate, warm, humid, with lush vegetation, lots of, lots of different kinds of vegetation, into a very hot and then dry seasonal climate. And so uh, the, the flora changed, all of the plant life changed, and it was less temperate, less lush, more like coniferous. And, uh, and it had a lot of different kinds of plants that did better in those areas. And because the sauropods were able to, I guess, adapt to that vegetation as it was as the vegetation was changing, then the the sauropods were able to stick around. They were the the most robust group of these dinosaurs, or the group the the most robust species of these dinosaurs, and were able to able to survive where others could not. So I'm, I'm wondering if surface area has anything to do with this also. also. It could also be. There were a lot of, I mean, there were a lot of other very large dinosaurs right. in that time period leading up to the period of clim climactic change. So, so it's not like all of a sudden only the big dinosaurs survived. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, the long-necked dinosaurs, the sauropods, did hmm. very well. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Although, yeah. although uh, yeah. I think if anybody out there does discover large sauropods in their butt, they should uh, get Dr. Justin's not-a-real-doctor ointment. It'll cure what ails you. What? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got it. That's, whoever got the joke, Justin, that's who it was for. We all in got Shabbat. it. <laughs> Anybody yeah. who didn't laugh at that joke, it's because it wasn't for you. It just wasn't for you. It just wasn't and for you. It was funny that I was exactly for you. <laughs> um, another another possibility is maybe the sauropods' teeth were better able to chew up the vegetation that was tougher tougher vegetation chewing but justin mm -hmm. lots of different things survive tell me about some big viruses okay uh viruses yeah good god what are they good for you got the rabies there's aids there's covid19 sounds like viruses are terrible uh but viruses do more than cause illness in fact those are sort of outliers in the viral society most viruses that we encounter don't have any ill effects Large viruses, especially those in the nucleocytoplasmic large DNA virus family, may have even played a role in evolution. So this is giant viruses that can integrate their genome into that of their host and then dramatically change the genetic makeup of that organism. This is according to Frank uh, Aylward, Assistant Professor, Department of Biological Sciences at Virginia Tech says, viruses play a central role in the evolution of life on Earth. One way that they shape the evolution of cellular life is through a process called endogenization, where they introduce new genomic material into their hosts. When a virus endogenizes into the genome of a host algae, it creates an enormous amount of new genetic raw material for evolution to work with. Uh, Mohamed Munir... Monaruza is a postdoctoral researcher at Allard's uh, lab, and he studies fragments of whole and uh, uh, sequences of raw viral DNA that have been inserted into the infected host's genome. Together, they discovered elements that originate from giant viruses that in, in uh, green algae, and they find it's actually much more common than they, anybody had thought. Their findings are published in Nature. So these are chlorophytes. It's a group of green algae. 
They are a photosynthetic organism that is the base of the food chain in many, many ecosystems. This is a massive amount of food uh, that our planet relies on. Uh, it goes down to its base to these algae. This is sort of one of the, the, the bottom tiers of the food pyramid. And they thrive in lakes and ponds, uh, freshwater kind of a... Uh, fresh still waters. They're close relatives to land plants. So also studying their interaction with giant viruses may give us some indication of what might have happened between viruses and early plant evolution. So uh, Munner Uzeman, who's the first author on the study, says, we now know that endogenous viral elements are common across chlorophytes, which makes us it makes you think that plants might also interact with these giant viruses. There is some data that suggests that some early plants like moss and ferns did experience these events over the evolutionary timeline. But we're not exactly sure about the extent of this phenomena and other early plants. What they do know is that in the green algae that they studied, they had 65 genomes and they found that 24 of them had some kind of viral signatures in their genomes, which originated from the repeated introduction of distinct viruses. In one of the organisms, uh, Tetrabena socialis, they found that about 10% of the genes in this algae originated from the giant virus. It's a pretty significant chunk to then. Yeah. And so some of the things that they're looking at this, they're trying to figure out what's, what are the conditions that cause this interaction. Uh, why is it the hosts don't show any sign of rejecting them? And how is it maintained? So if they're seeing this now, how is it that this hasn't been sort of pushed out of the genome over time? It must then, they assume, be creating some advantageous or uh, at least not disadvantageous uh, role within the genome. You know, I'm thinking back to like we've had other examples of giant viruses being able to sort of create its own DNA, creating its own new nucleotide patterns in there, too. So within giant DNA, there's already or excuse me, within giant viruses, the DNA already has an ability to sort of experiment. And then it interjects itself into these uh, in, into this other life form or into this life form which then utilizes that DNA in unknown ways going forward. So More looks like we found a nice driver <laughs> of, of early evolution. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's bacteria we know have horizontal gene transfer, but you get these viruses in there and you have these, you got these, little bits of viral DNA, they can be moved all over the place, add a little diversity. So is it viral? Is it bacterial? Where did it come from initially? It's probably all shared at one point. Yeah, it's going to be sort of... Which, how can you share DNA with something that isn't alive? I don't know, just saying. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to, to see where this goes. Because, you know, one of, the, one of the difficult things, of course, is sort of going to be able to backtrack a virus that was sort of present uh, the, uh, you know millions and millions and millions of years ago when life was just getting started on this planet billions of years ago uh, three billion years ago if you're talking about the first bacteria uh, and if there were interactions with with viruses and bacteria back then which ones started what how did they mm -hmm. you know so it'd be really fascinating to find examples if you could backtrack uh, plant land plant uh, to to virus origins. Really fascinating sub uh, subject and field that's that's just now getting started. Really awesome. Blair, you yeah. got another story now. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I feel like somebody has to stitched together us mispronouncing people's names and places and species names years would, years of it i would love <laughs> i would love that anyway um do either of you have a white noise machine a no. fan. i have a fan you have a right. fan okay 
So I, yeah, I also don't have one, but if you had to pick what to put on it, you might want to put like some crashing waves, maybe a squeaky dog toy, no. um, you know, <laughs> you can kind of pick what it is you want in the background. Well, zoo monkeys, um, actually in a Finnish zoo, have shown a significant preference for traffic sounds instead of noises of the jungle or other natural sounding things. Uh, they had a tunnel fitted with a sensor, um, and they gave the primates a chance to choose to listen to sounds of rain, traffic, zen sounds, or dance music. Ooh! <laughs> and the sound of vehicles rumbling past was overwhelmingly the most popular choice, and they slept or groomed inside the sound tunnel. They didn't do that when any other sounds were playing. So uh, one of the lead researchers believes that the road sounds actually uh, might have been chosen because they mimic some of the monkey's natural means of communications. In the wild, they use this high-pitched hissing sound, squeaking or croaking. So they, she thinks it might be similar. I think it's probably just because they're zoo monkeys. So they're used to a uh, more urban environment and that's yeah. what they were raised in. So, I, you know, that's what my expectation is. But um, it's a good original study where they can show preference in zoo animals. They could extend this to lighting, temperature, any number of visual cues where animals can pick their own environment. So kind of hand them the remote control and let them pick what's playing on Netflix. So yeah, if you were, if you wanted to know what these particular white-faced sake monkeys chose um in this one Finnish zoo they they preferred traffic noise I think you're right on that it seems like if you're reared in an environment with traffic noise you're going to have uh, associations with good memories and you know being cuddled c cuddled and cleaned by your mother um other monkeys taking care of you you're not going to be afraid of them and it's going to be soothing It'll be, that's your, that's your environment. Mm -hmm. That's what yep. you like. Yeah, absolutely. But that's funny. Yeah. We just assume, oh, they're going to like jungle sounds. Yeah. These some of you listening are... <laughs> probably like to put twists on to go to sleep. Right. We're part of your natural environment. There's enough episodes. If you, if you're not cut up, there's 800. So you can just keep them playing for days, weeks, months, probably. You never run out of white noise, so we could be there for you. Just saying. I, I think we're a little bit noisier than white noise, I think. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to think. Um, well, I've got a little bit of a nope coming up in this story. Um, <laughs> for years on the show, we have talked about climate change, and we've basically been been tracking our societal and scientific understanding of client climate change over the last 20 years that we have been doing this show all told it, it's and never it's never decreased it's never decreased and they never come out with like good news we overestimated how bad yeah, it's gonna yeah. be it's yeah, always yeah, been the not so bad. uh opposite of like yeah, the thing that well, the one study did left out this other thing that's happening that's going yeah. to make it faster, quicker, horrible, or wetter. Yeah, yeah, and in the in in all of these stories, there are many solutions to climate change and the issues of climate change that have been put forward. So, in addition to hey, we ha should just stop putting as much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, there are geoengineering solutions that have run the gamut from let's spray stuff in the atmosphere and block the sun's light. Maybe we can put a big old solar panel in space and also block the sun's light. Maybe we could, you know, there are lots of ideas of how we can use engineering to build and make our way out of the problem that we have caused for ourselves. Well, over the years, I've very often been skeptical of a lot of these ideas, but, you know, just understanding the complexity of ecosystems and atmospheric interactions and so many things that we had the hubris to think that we understand how it works, and then somebody goes and changes something, and, oh, look, there's this completely unforeseen consequence. Well, you have to do modeling, and you have to try and figure out what all the pieces are. And in a paper published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences this week, researchers 
used computer modeling to look at um, what happens in the atmosphere with solar geoengineering if it were to be done and so, what they so found explain, explain, what they found explain, is if what solar engineering so solar geoengineering one of the ways that this would work is to inject little tiny particles like sulfur dioxide that are reflective into the atmosphere and because they're reflective they would reflect the sun's light and be a, a shield against the okay, sun so, so the earth going to, would cool we're going to intentionally aerosolize the upper atmosphere with particles and that's yes so literally the plot of the matrix yeah is it, and is it really <laughs> yes but that. let's but let's let me Sulfur dioxide, there's a lot of it in Venus's atmosphere. I'm just going to put that out there before we move forward in this story. But what the researchers found is, oh, hey, if you if we were to allow engineers to move forward with this idea, it could make certain kinds of clouds disappear from the sky entirely. Gone. What? That sounds bad. Nope to deep. Yes. I mean, clouds are a part of the way the atmosphere cycles. We know that clouds do block light from the sun coming in. They also are part of keeping some heat trapped in uh, in our atmosphere. And it's a very complex complex system. Um, what they what they found is that elevated. Let's see. There's another set of risks. Solar geoengineering of solar ge geoengineering that has not received the attention it deserves. Elevated greenhouse gas concentrations may trigger substantial global warming by reducing the cooling effect stratocumulus clouds provide, even when all or much of the greenhouse gas at the top of the atmosphere is compensated by solar geoengineering. So the models suggest that unabated levels of greenhouse gas, regardless of overall climate warming, would have very detrimental effects within around 100 years, so fairly soon. And then it would lead to more warming, more warming. We would get hotter. I know, I just love the idea of like, there's too much of something in the atmosphere. I know what I'll do. I'll put more stuff in the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. So that particular idea, I hope this study makes its way out into the engineering community so that uh, nobody ever says or nobody in a position of power ever lets this happen. <laughs> Let's just not do that. Can we can we not mess with the atmosphere of the only planet that we live on? How would that work? Because I don't know. it is the whole planet that we all live on. So... How Who, could one nation be like, I'm going to ruin this place for everybody? <laughs> I just think that we've got the best solution. And so my solution is we're just going to do it. And, yeah, you know, like everyone will find out it's the best solution. And, oh, mm -hmm. oops, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I anyway. hate. I hate. Let me just tell you, I hate. Yeah. Well, this, yeah. Was, this, was, this was the nope idea. Right. I mean, that's, yeah, it was perfect. This is a bad yeah. idea. It's a, it's a bad idea. I've always been a bit skeptical, but this is, I think, the benefit of the scientific process. People can throw ideas out. People can be supportive or skeptical. And then you do scientific inquiry, experimentation, modeling to determine whether or not it's going to really be a good idea before you actually go about destroying your only planet's atmosphere for yeah so anyway that's what i think justin do you have a story i do uh this story is about the mysterious peoples of chaco canyon and mesa chaco verde canyon. so these are the people who built the amazing cliff dwellings in the now arid deserts of new mexico actually all throughout the sort of four corners region in the southwest of the united states they thrived there really for uh, over 10,000 years. And then sometime in the late 1200s abandoned the territory completely. But before that, they had built these complex 
societies. It had this unique architecture. If you if you Google Mesa Verde, uh, you will see what looks like these amazing, almost alien, uh, cliff dwelling built things. These uh, these structures with that within canyons and along face cliffs that were just uh, really a, a advanced ar architecture for the times, planet wide. So climate change had sort of dramatically altered things. They had an ice age retreat. There had been lush watery lands as the big glaciers had melted. And then the, the whole area became increasingly more arid and hotter and water became more uh, hard to access. So that's the theory about why at least uh, everybody left the area. International geosciences team led by the University of South Florida have discovered one way in which the ancient Americans survived lava tunnels. Exploring a lava tube in the El Ma uh, Malpias National Monument using precise radiocarbon dated charcoal found preserved in the deep recesses. Uh, University of Southern Florida geoscience professor Bogdan Onak and his team discovered that ancestral Puebloans, Puebloans survived devastating droughts by traveling deep into the caves and starting fires. Why would they start fires to survive a desert, Kiki? Claire? Why? Because it gets cold at night. Yes. Oh, yeah, it does get cold at night. It is high desert. But that's not the right answer. Right answer was oh. there was ice down there. There was frozen glacier ice down in these lava tubes. <laughs> and they would start small fires to melt ice deposits to get fresh water and then... Yeah cart them out with uh, clay pottery. That's so this, oh, interesting. And this is from, they've been doing this for a while. So this is dating back as far as 150 AD to up to the age of 950, based on their carbon dating. Water gatherers left behind charred materials in the cave, indicating that they'd started fires to melt the ice, to collect his drinking water. Uh, they also did some work in collaboration with colleagues from the National Park Service, University of Minnesota, a research team from Romania was involved. And is that uh, the discovery is published in scientific reports. So droughts are thought to have influenced uh, settlement and subsist subsistence strategies, the intensity of agriculture, demographic trends, migration of the ancestral Puebloan societies uh, that once inhabited there. Researchers claim the discovery from ice deposits presents unambiguous evidence of five drought events that impacted those societies over the centuries. Quoting voice from, uh, from Onak, this discovery sheds light on one of the many human environment interactions in the Southwest at a time when climate change forced people to find water resources in unexpected places. Uh, sort of interesting too, the, uh, they hadn't, gone looking for this. So Onak studies climate change by taking ice cores uh, from, from uh, typically really deep locations uh, to sort of see what the history of the water accumulation was when you, know, you can tell a lot about the climate above ground by, by going underground and seeing what's, what's accumulated and when it was accumulated and this sort of thing. But when they got down there, they found all of this carbon ash. In fact, in one of their core samples, they got a piece of pottery <laughs> back. And it was like, okay, you know, we're like, okay, this, this, uh, the study was focused on a single lava tube, which is amid a 40 mile swath of treacherous ancient lava flows uh, and tubes underground. So they were, were I think, 14 meters uh, at a 14 meters depth and a, at a, at the location where they found this, but it was still pretty good, uh, you know, uh, pretty high above sea level because these are, this is a high desert area, but yeah, their, their ice, uh, ice cores brought back <laughs> bits of bits of pottery that they think was probably used to collect the water out. They also kind of noticed that the fires, all the fires that were set seemed to be small in size. 
indicating that there was probably a threshold that the 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 ancient uh, uh, peoples had figured out that they could start a fire and still maintain uh, air quality enough. Right. So if you start too big of a fire, everything fills up with smoke. If you start these small fires, the normal aeration of these tunnels was sufficient, perhaps, to push it out. So. Yeah, they went That's down, cool. found charcoal ash That's deposits, great. pottery shards. Uh, yeah, so it was a fun, unexpected thing, but it turned into a much more interesting, I think, uh, discovery than the first one that they went to. But they still get, and they could still see the uh, the drought events uh, that took place as well. I love it. What I, I, think that, I think it's fascinating. And think about that next time you just like go turn on the faucet. <laughs> Where does your I'm water thirsty. come from? Maybe well, I guess I'll go 14 too? meters underground, start a small fire, and collect it in this melt vessel. Once my ice melts, and then bring it back. Yeah, right. bring it oh, all back. That thirsty all of a sudden. <laughs> um, I've got some story. I've got a story about sleep. I do. Mm, sweet, sleep. sweet, sweet sleep. Sweet, sweet sleep. We all love our sleep, right? <laughs> sleep is sleep is something that we. Uh, don't take for granted so much anymore. So many of us are potentially uh, experiencing sleep issues this year of 2020. But I have a question. What are your sleep habits like? Do you sleep more like an older person or more like a younger person? What does that mean? How, how yeah. are those categorized? <laughs> well, I mean, this is kind of a broad generalization for sure. But uh Younger people are more likely to have uninterrupted sleep, to sleep deeply, to have a sleep of maybe six to eight hours. And um, one of the most important things, not to experience daytime sleepiness. OK, that's what I was that's what I was going to say, because I was like, I feel like the unexpected necessity of an afternoon nap that will just show up out of the blue is definitely oldie person. Sleep bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right. I think I slept like a young person until probably this year. Okay, I like so I slept for got... six to eight hours dead to the world. Just like asleep in five minutes, did not wake up again till the morning. Um, it has changed drastically. <laughs> the bad astronomer just jumped into our YouTube chat room. And in addition to saying congratulations on 800 episodes, thank you. Thanks. Phil. He also says he wakes up screaming every four hours, so sleeps like a baby. Ha, 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 ha. Yes. But um, bump. Yes, I mean, but, yeah. So but that's like a year, real thing. That's a real thing. No, no, no. This year, this is, that's, people, there's people who do this, uh, which I didn't really realize was the thing until recently. But yeah, people will, who will scream bloody murder. Like night not terrors. Not talking to talk yeah, night terrors, but night they don't that's necessarily yeah. remember them. Exactly, yeah. And so, but that's not what we're talking about. That's oh. not what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> what, I, <laughs> what I'm talking about are two studies that came out this week, one published in Circulation and one published in Nature Human Behavior. The Circulation study looked at a very large cohort of individuals, tracked them over several years. They both did looked at thousands of people, tracked them over several years. Circulation study found that if your sleep habits um, are more like a younger person, if you sleep better, report seven to eight hours a night, you don't experience insomnia or daytime sleepiness, you're 42% less likely to experience heart failure. The Nature Human Behavior Study found a similar relationship for cognitive performance. And the researchers write in that uh, Nature Human Behavior paper in their abstract, taken together, our results point to mus multiple facets of sleep neurophysiology that track coherently with underlying age-dependent determinants of cognitive and physical health trajectories in older adults. And so uh, the sleep habits are correlated really with, or can be correlated with oral overall health, your brain health, your body health, according to these two studies. And if you have these 
better sleep patterns, more regular sleep. I'm going to say we, we can just give this year a pass. Whatever happens this year, don't worry about it. We'll get back on track later after everyone's not all stressed out and afraid of the pandemic and all the stuff going on from that stress. Low level anxiety all the time. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just get past this. Yeah. We'll just get past it. And then, you know, go back to normal baseline, see what the new baseline is, but do what you can. I will sleep. say there is nothing worse you can say to someone who can't sleep oh. than to say that, you know, if you slept harder, you'd be healthier. You'll be healthier. Hey, oh, you're a terrible sleeper. You're going to die. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, We're that's really going to help me go to sleep. I need to sleep so I can be. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome, everyone. Um, I'm glad I was able to give you more stress fodder for your lack of sleep. <laughs> yeah, add that to the list. My stress is making you so I can't sleep, which that's going to make me die sooner. And that's stressing me out further. It's fine. <sighs> it's fine. All right. I hope everyone gets a good night's sleep tonight, but we're not going to sleep yet. Blair, you have another story. Yeah, just a quick one about dogs. Um, so dogs. for those of you listening who have a, a pup at home, um, if you had one of your dog's favorite toys and, um, I don't know, like a bracelet on separate parts of the room, where would the dog go? <laughs> They'd go to the toy. Uh, what if you made it just so clear that you liked the bracelet more? What do you think the dog would do? They'd go to the toy. Um, but <laughs> I think they would go to the toy. Yeah, of they course they would. Toy. But in a toy. But in a study from Utvis Laurent University in Hungary, uh, inspired by work on infants, they wanted to see whether dogs' behavior could be guided for guided by or influenced by human preference, owner preference. And so, as I mentioned, they tried it first with a fetching behavior, and pfft, nope. If the dog could have their toy, they took their toy. But um, then they took those items out of reach and they wanted to see kind of what it would look like for the dog to show interest without actually being able to grab the thing. And when the owner showed more attention towards one item over the other, they actually did direct more attention towards that item. So there seems to be some sort of interest that is kind of inspired by the human interest so oh. so it's i if mean and were, i'm sure if it were food the dog would totally go where you were telling it to go if it were for you know its favorite toy versus you saying here's really yummy steak or you know the dog would be like yeah food i'm gonna eat it yeah so be i mean your, the your friend for food this very preliminary set study says that the dog looked at the favored item more and in groups where the human didn't smile at a particular item and like frown at another item when they did acted neutrally to both, they actually statistically looked the same amount at both items. So there seemed to be a bias based on that, which, you know, if the dog can't touch it, if they can't investigate it closely, then sure, there's going to be some curiosity in my owner's really interested in this item. It must be good. Yeah. So it's, I, it's, so I, I'm, can we at all be surprised that dogs are trainable? No. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I think that's a very like, good point. I mean, yeah. what, there's a, the Rhodesian uh, Ridgeback was trained to hunt lions. Mm -hmm. What dog in its right mind cares yeah. about attacking and hunting a lion? None. None. No dog wants that on its own will. They're just programmable to a great degree. Yeah, to for do sure. What humans want. But I but think, this, I is, think this isn't food based is the thing. So it's not technically training. It is just a cue of what I'm interested in. So, but I think that I think that it in between the two of these comments, Justin saying, well, yes, is it a surprise that dogs are trainable and this study and what it's actually showing is that that humans can cue animal the dog interest and mm -hmm. then potentially because of that, that bond, the human dog bond and the dog seeing this is important. Oh, do I want to? Oh, OK, I don't need to right now, but in a training situation would make that happen more easily. Mm -hmm. 
So Look, I know this has been cat five times your weight. Yeah. Uh, may Lion. look intimidating from afar, but uh, I just I just want you. There'll be a treat after, all right? But I just need you to go over there and. and how do you explain that to a dog in the first place? Like I that's going to be. You to, I want you to do something that's going to threaten your ultimate existence on this planet. Yeah. Oh, it Here, both says have a dogs begging strip. are loyal and the dumbest creatures on the planet. At the same <laughs> I time. mean, they can't be that dumb if they're so and trainable. We love them, and we love them. We do. It just—it just does this... say that trainable doesn't necessarily mean intelligence. Those... It kind of does. <laughs> refusal to be trained to do things against your own will i think is a sign of intelligence you know when i put the you know when i put the camera on myself that's like a cue yeah (laughs) we know who's not trainable (laughs) snap (laughs) if you just tuned in this is this week in science If you're interested in a twist shirt or mug or other item of merchandise for holiday shopping, for gift giving, head over to twist.org and click on our Zazzle link. Also available now are Twist Blair's Animal Corner calendars. While you're there, click on the horned frog. Yes. And you'll be able to purchase a calendar or more. They make great gifts for the holidays. I'll be sending them out soon to those of you who order them. Get them while they're good. All right. It is time for the COVID update. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like it's not even (laughs) worth it. I don't feel like doing a funny bit anymore. No, it was just not... It's not funny, and let me tell you why. We are just about at 250,000 people dead in the United States as a result of COVID-19. It took 96 days for the United States to reach its first 1 million cases earlier this year. We just went from 10 to 11 million cases in seven days, according according to Johns Hopkins. It's, It's accelerating and... Uh, It is spreading everywhere. If you did not start quarantining for a family Thanksgiving on or before November 12th, maybe consider a Zoom holiday or a drive-by holiday this year. Hospitals are filling up across the country right now, and that means the next couple of months is going to be all about personal responsibility. It's up to everyone. It's everyone's job to keep others safe right now. Because... There is no vaccine yet, but Moderna and Pfizer have announced 94 to 95 percent efficacy for their mRNA vaccines. We reported on Pfizer uh, with their press release of a week ago saying they had 90 percent efficacy. Well, they've done a final tally of their clinical trial results to date and they say they're at 95. Moderna is about at 95. Pfizer wants to apply for an emergency youth use authorization with the FDA. And if that happens rapidly, that would mean that as soon as the authorization happens, 50 million doses could be delivered to the United States by the early 2021, which would make mRNA vaccine from Pfizer available to healthcare workers, frontline workers, and uh, those who are deemed to be among the first individuals to receive the vaccine. That would be possible early in the year, which would be amazing. But apparently, both of these vaccines, Moderna's mRNA vaccine more so even than Pfizer's, they have uh, adverse reactions that are not serious adverse reactions, not the kinds of things that would stop a vaccine from working. It's like itching and burning at the site of injection, having a fever, feeling pain, aches, having a lot of the uh, the symptoms of sometimes 
coming down with the thing that you're getting vaccinated for. People, people often complain of the symptoms they get after they get a flu vaccine. And um, this it seems to be that a large number, 2% of individuals who have so far received the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine during clinical trial are experiencing high fevers, are experiencing aches and pains. And these kinds of results could, although they're not dangerous to people's lives, lead to less uh, less adoption of the mm-hmm. vaccines, that people wouldn't want to get them because they'll hear bad things about them. Because who likes to be uncomfortable? But it... Uh, <laughs> you know what's worse? Your lungs turning to jelly. <laughs> there you go. That's what I... <laughs> that's the point exactly. Sorry, not to eat your point, but jeez. <laughs> that's it. Yes. Um, well, these clinical trials will continue potentially, and it's uh, I I would doubt that the f- uh, the FDA will give emergency use use authorization at within this year. But we who knows what we will see. We'll see what happens. These uh, clinical trials are going to continue for about two years, following all the subjects, looking for long term effects of the vaccine, looking at immunity, how effective it is. All sorts of things, because especially because these mRNA vaccines are brand new and we've never had mRNA vaccines before. It's a new thing. Using your body and your body's machinery to create the vaccine or create the antibodies. Mm -hmm. All righty. All righty. All righty. Next story on the COVID roundup. This one is potentially good news. There have been multiple reports of diverging interpretations of SARS-CoV-2 immunity. We've talked about it on the show. According to some people, there's evidence that people can be reinfected. And now that we've been in this for a while, the reports of reinfection are increasing and increasing and increasing. However, sometimes it could be just persistent infection in which Mm -hmm. the virus was never really cleared from the person in the first place. You start feeling better, but it has been shown that SARS-CoV-2 can actually be har- harbored in the gut, in the gut, uh, in the cells in the gut for a long period of time. So will vaccines work if we don't develop long-lasting immunity? Mm, we might have to get them every year. I don't, you know, I don't know. Will they work? So far, they, there's effectiveness. But here's the good news, and maybe it's appropriate right now. There's a preprint report this week, and there is also an article out in the New York Times following the preprint that COVID, they followed the COVID-19 patients over six months. And it concludes that lasting immunity is possible. There's another so- element to it, too, that I've been very suspect of. Yes. Uh, when it comes to any of these studies in the United States, because we have had atrocious testing uh, in the first place, we've had yeah. uh, waves of bad tests that had horrible opportunities for false positives, false negatives, false, just almost, just worth, almost worthless reliability, right? Standards. So part of me thinks, okay, there's people who came down with COVID who were who who tagged as came down with COVID who maybe didn't. Yeah. And so if they're the ones who have been reported as reinfected, maybe it's because they thought they'd gotten it and were immune and went out into society like, I'm fine, and but then got it. There's, for real. there's many, there's so many there's, different levels there's so of this, noise. too. There's, there's so there's, much there's noise also... in that system. There's also people who got it but didn't have they maybe had a mild infection and then they got it again and got a serious infection. There are people who have had serious infections, thought they were fine, and then they went on to have another serious infection. Like there is every possible combination that you could consider it's happening. And that's what makes it so complicated. And like you said, our testing is atrocious yes. and so if you catch somebody at a certain phase of the the disease development the vac of the virus's life cycle who knows you know the the test result might not be telling you everything you need to know right but the good the good news the silver lining in all of this is that <laughs> so many have caught 
COVID. That if it was something that you could catch, uh, that you couldn't uh, build an immunity to, I feel like that would have outpaced the noise in the system to where we'd be saying, ah, obviously we do not have immunity to it because so many tens of, if not hundreds of thousands have been reinfected. Because we aren't talking about numbers like that, it makes the cases where we see reinfection, in my mind, somewhat suspect in terms of the overall trend. Or or it's possible for some that some people don't build the immunity as well. But I I think it's uh, there's the the fact that we haven't gotten a clear signal of reinfection past the noise of sometimes it shows this, sometimes it shows that tells me that. It, it, it feels, it seems, it's logical to conclude, however it should be best phrased, that there is an immunity that does come from this. There And there does seem to be an immunity. And in this particular study published in the Bio Archive, they looked at immune memory of all three branches of adaptive immunity, the CD4 T cell, CD8 T cell, and humoral immunity antibodies and memory B cells, according to Shane Crotty, who is one of the authors on the study from his Twitter account. He said they looked at them in a mixed cross-sectional longitudinal study of 185 recovered COVID-19 cases, including 41 cases for more than six six months after COVID infection. And over that time, they saw a a diversity in the profiles of these different immune, uh, these different immune agents. But what, and and this is one of the first times that we're really looking at all of these immune agents, these different cells that are involved, the different factors that are involved over such a long time period. And what they found is that it really looks as though individuals maintain neutralizing antibodies for six months and other forms of immune memory. So going past five months, going into six months, there is humoral, there is, uh, there is immunity that, and it may not be, and like we're seeing a variety in how this affects different individuals, perhaps it is dependent on the individual in some situations, but the majority of people hopefully will have the the development of immunity in this kind of a a fashion. So this is a preprint, still needs to be peer reviewed before it's published. But at the same time, it looks like a great study and people are very excited about it. Yeah. And and as much as I we we should all be thankful for science for coming up with these vaccinations, uh, we could have applied science Again, with the brute force of actual shutdowns for the time it takes milk to go bad in the fridge. And and through that brute force been done with this at the beginning of this year. Uh, yeah. Now, now what we have to do is we have to do more lockdowns, more stay homes. We have to be rigorous about taking care of ourselves because we are responsible for this. There's a study also out in the New England Journal of Medicine this week about uh, how an area in China took care of their uh, a little outbreak. There were there was one case, two cases that happened in an area of China, and they instead of locking everything down, they well they didn't let people go on public transit at first. They brought in thousands of volunteers. They did over t- they tested over ten million people. They tested over 10 million people. They used pooled sampling. They used all sorts of methods. They were able to find 12 cases of COVID and isolate those individuals. And they (laughs) completely knocked it out by by testing everybody, a rigorous test everybody solution. And until somebody, until people tested negative, they were not able to ride public transit. There were rules in place, but it worked. So to move forward, we could, we could initiate testing if we had the coordination Mm -hmm. from, from our federal government to Mm -hmm. our states, the resources allotted to do it. There are ways to do it. It takes effort and and And, money and people and and it's it's hard it's very hard it's not that hard i mean the alternative so the the alternative the alternative we're going to discover this winter so Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, so to put, I just want to clarify a couple of things. Uh, the vaccines that are coming are not a cure. So still don't get it. This you have to you have to have the vaccine before you encounter COVID. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. You have to. Right. Ha you, this is not to fix it. If you got it, this is you have to have it before you get it. Otherwise, it right. doesn't do anything. And and one of the things that this country, unfortunately, apparently some in leadership did not or do not comprehend. Same problem in Sweden. Herd immunity, as we're now finding, could potentially exist to get there through that method in the United States with just calling it a 2% fatality rate over the 350 million people. It's simple math. 7 million people would have to die. We're at 250 some thousand people and it's already the worst that we've encountered. 7 million P Americans would have to die in order to do that herd immunity idea. So I don't like if that. Not Let's not do it. Nah, that's a bad plan. <laughs> that's a bad plan. That's no, nope. That's a that's big nope. 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 Yeah. I heard I heard today <laughs> um, nope. on NPR, so I assume it's like a good source, that um a third of Americans know someone who's um either died or ended up in the hospital from COVID. Mm -hmm. Which that's that's not good. <laughs> a third? Well, that's it. it is that knowing personally? Because uh, uh like how many uh who never heard of Herman Cain? Who no, does, no, no, no. Someone who's Tom known. Hanks. Who not a not a not a celebrity. Someone you know, okay. who have met you've met personally. It's, uh, Tom Hanks didn't die though, did he? Is he still? No, he's around? fine. He's, he's fine. fine. He's fine. <laughs> he donated a bunch of plasma before we realized maybe that's nothing. Don't so. yeah. Don't let's not spread spread unfounded ru rumors on the internet. <laughs> it would be terrible. <sighs> Oh, my goodness. Well, let's be done with the COVID corner. Let's be done with that. Mm -hmm. And let's keep moving on up to the next portions of the show. I just want to say this is This Week in Science. Thank you so much for listening. And if you want to help Twist grow, get a friend to subscribe today. Yay! That would be great. Oh, what time is it? What I think time it's, is it? It's a certain time when we I play some music. Maybe. Maybe. Do I play music right now? I think I so. I Why? always forget Why what I'm supposed to do. Because it's time for Blair's mm -hmm. Animal Corner. Blair! <laughs> she loves our creatures, great and small. Biped, milliped, no pet at all. Wanna hear about animals? She's your girl. Except for giant pandas and squirrels. And I'm no more. I have a really cute story actually about uh finches. Kiki's favorite the finches. zebra finch. Yes. Great beeps. Zebra finchies and how they are able to remember up to 42 birds based on their vocalizations alone mm. so we know from prior research that humans have what's known as fast mapping of course when i started reading this story i started thinking of how i can hear a voice and if it's someone i've come in contact more than a couple times i usually can figure out who it is pretty quickly and that's what fast mapping is it's the ability to recognize an association between things after very little exposure so you can recognize someone's voice after sometimes a single conversation and of course, as you might imagine, prior research suggested that fast mapping was what? Uniquely human. Because <laughs> why Everything. not, I guess? It's, oh, all, it's all ours. Anyway. It's ours. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> um, they trained finches, zebra finches, on small sets of call data and then expanded them to test the bird's limits. So in the first day of training, they would play either a call or a song for a given bird. And then vocaliz vocalizations were paired with one set leading to food and another that did not. So the results were a test that allowed the bird to demonstrate whether they recognized a bird making a given call. So if you heard the call, then they would play the song and the song for that bird was the one that had the food. 
Over time, the number of bird calls increased. And if the bird recognized the pre-recorded call, they could allow it to play. Or I love this. If they did not recognize the call, they'd skip it. Skip. <laughs> Press nope. the button to skip. Nope. Skip. Nope. Skip. <laughs> nope. Yep. I recognize that one. And in the training, the researchers found that finches were able to remember and recognize on average 42 birds by their vocalizations alone. And so they also wanted to note that birds learn to recognize other birds by their calls very quickly. It took just a couple of exposures. And they also found that the birds retained those memories over time. They left them for a month and came back and the birds still were able to recognize the calls. That's impressive. Yeah. So they indicate that zebra finches have fast mapping skills and humans, once again, not unique. <laughs> oh, for not the people unique. who I don't really know. want I don't to... Have ever met anybody who spoke 42 languages no well it's not languages yeah. it's individuals it's, it's They're voices. recognizing yeah. 42 oh, it's voice, voices it's, no it's, it's just, no, it's just voices just have you voices ever heard oh okay you, i could do that That's have you ever hard. heard have you ever heard zebra finches <sighs> you, the, have you heard the zebra finches yeah to our ears to our ears it's like yeah but but they can they can tell the difference. I want that to be my ringtone. I love it. Anyway, um, yeah. So once again, uh, we're not special, guys. We're just animals. We're an ape. We really have not been around like that long compared to others. You know, it's we're the same as just like to say, we're exactly as old as everything else, evolutionarily speaking. So, and, you know. It's, yeah, I, I feel like the, any animal that has to recognize individuals, uh, zebra finches are very social. They live in mm -hmm. big colonies, right? Lots of big flocks, lots of in, lots of other individuals. They are barely, very, very tuned in to their their parents, the their neighbors, the mm -hmm. individuals who train them on their on their call. They learn their calls from other individuals. And I'm imagining if we're talking about any animal that has language abilities, birds would be first on the list, yep. mm -hmm. and then. Uh, Bats, I'm sure mm -hmm. bats, dolphins, mm -hmm. um, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. How many? Let's just keep listing them. Yeah. Mice, rats, uh, elephants, mice, rats, rodents. Uh, at least have an ability to to I, I mean to teach. That's an interesting whole thing. Like dolphins can teach. Uh, mm -hmm. The orcas can teach their young. The um, but yeah, this fast mice mapping. Can teach other mice to avoid mouse traps. Like, that's a whole other layer too when you're then talking about not just being able to understand what something else is like oh oh what is it the uh, the little prairie dogs they have different vocalizations for hey there's a mountain lion or a fox or a hawk in the air that the the rest of the group can recognize Language? but the question is can they tell each prairie dog apart by their call and how quickly yeah, they probably can. It's, we're not special. No. We're not special. This is Blair's People Aren't Special Corner. Yeah. Okay. Now tell us about yeah. your very special, terrifying parasite. Yeah. Do you want to know What's what is special? <laughs> I should, I should the deep sea now. isopod, which is a type of crustacean, that are ectoparasites mm. of fish. Mm. They're called. That means on the outside. Yes, they're called cymathoids. And uh, the most famous of which, Cymathoa exingua, is known as the tongue biter. Oh, geez. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's the buddy that eats the tongue of a fish and replaces it. Oh, it's that mm. thing. Oh, that yeah, it's terrifying. so gross, guys. But anyway, this very important, very gross crustacean, let me tell you about it. Um, so okay. an, um, a, a relative of that tongue eater was discovered 
Um, we knew about this species. There, um, there were a few. There were five specimens cataloged and described oh, in 1981. Oh, this is not going to be the time. It's going to be a different thing. You, you you betcha. Replacing. So oh, no. yes. So cymathoids. There's over 300 species of them, but the least studied of all of them is this one, Elthusa splendida, and they Great. only there's only five specimens that have ever oh, been cataloged. They were found story. in 1981. They were recovered from a Cuban dogfish, which is a deep sea shark, and it was captured off of southern Brazil in the western South Atlantic. In this study, they discovered a specimen of Elthusa splendida while processing fish spe specimens at a fisheries science center in Hokkaido University Museum, Hakodate. So um, this is in a Japanese fish, is a Japanese deep sea shark, and it was collected uh, from the East China Sea and it had been preserved in formalin. So they found it preserved. They found this guy in inside of this shark. I just and want to know what part of the body the thing You're going to have to wait. It's the stinger at the end. I'm not going to tell you right away because what's interesting about this is not where it connects to the shark. What's interesting about this is that this is an almost antipodal place to the previous location of this little bugger, which means pretty much the exact opposite of the planet. So these things, so understudied, we have six of them now, I feel like apparently are all over the planet or mm -hmm. hitch a ride with dogfish or they're just, they've co-evolved with Squalus, which is just like the, um, a particular group of sharks. Intentional um, so, so it's really cool because they're all over the planet, but it also means there's a lot out there for us to find still. Uh -huh. um, right. So these guys also are unique in that um, they do parasitize the mouth, but they attach to the palate. So. By, okay, keep going. It's uh, it, it's unusual. Um, it is one of the only species that we found that do that. So that makes it extra unusual as well. Um, but this That's means it. now the scientists propose they want to just go peering into the mouths of fish and sharks all over museums across the world because this bugger might be everywhere. <laughs> So once again, we have uh, something being found in a museum collection that wasn't anticipated. But um, yeah, they're so widespread that they could be they could be attached to pallets of fish, high and low, far and wide. So like on the roof of my mouth, uh huh, or like underneath my tongue. Um, or, I believe or would it's it eat the, your tongue? It's the it's the roof of the mouth, so they the don't eat the tongue. Just... Okay, they just so it's like a, a double tongue. Ugh. <laughs> which like fish tongues are, are stuck to the, the bottom of their mouth. So mm -hmm. um, they can't stick their tongue out like we can. So um, it would, you know, it's not like the tongue would get in the way or anything really, but yeah. So, you know, sweet dreams, that everyone. A, that ended a lot better than I thought it was. Really? You thought it was going to be yeah. worse than the palate? The palate's pretty gross. Is it? Actually, I, I, I'm, I think I, I think I understood where Justin was taking it, and I'm glad it didn't. Go oh yeah, no, it didn't go places. there. No, it wasn't it's one a, of those animal corners. It's a good size <laughs> little crustacean, though. Yeah, it's is that the size little... of the thing? Uh -huh. so oh this... my goodness! There you go. So imagine it's covering Whoa. your whole palate. And there, we have a picture here for people listening, and this thing is—it's it, like a big three thumb. fingers, three fingers long. <laughs> three fingers well the length One, two, of a three. finger probably as wide as a, a i mean th that's a big yellow as wide one. as a more wider as than a, a finger but as long as three fingers held that, together like you're you're saying three fingers but it's not like three fingers end to end that would be very long it's no long it's like hands finger. on a horse oh yes. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Growing up on a farm that's the only way i know how to count actually yeah. hands on a horse. Yeah, sure. oh, all right it's a very interesting looking little creature I'm now, 
I want to know how many people are going to the fish market and looking in the fish mouths now. How many of you will wake up in the middle of the night and think that you have something clinging to your palate? Actually, <laughs> actually, to just to remind people, these mouth. are so common. They have been in the mouths, tongues, and palates of many of the fish that you've eaten. No Potentially. We, they're deep sea, so we don't know. But the tongue ones definitely have Some... been in fish that you've eaten. Yes. They just removed that part before you got fed it. Maybe somebody ate the tongue of the fish that you ate. Wait. Okay. Never mind. Wow. Thanks, Blair. This is Yeah. Been... So if you all want a, just a beautiful kind of landscape to look at before you go to bed tonight, go ahead and Google um, tongue eating parasite uh and it'll be it'll be beautiful nope nope yep nope, nope. it's I, gross it's very I, gross nope. i i can't say that i'm gonna do that it's cymethoid google cymethoid. you know i know i know Tongue we eat, in, in your corner we, it's often pointed out that humans are just animals i'm glad we're not fish yeah same 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 <laughs> This is one of those moments. Yeah. One of those moments when you're reminded I'm glad, how I'm not glad you are animal. not to be a fish. <laughs> All right, friends. This is This Week in Science. Thank you so much for being with us here for our 800th episode. Oh, we're having a lot of fun tonight. Oh, yeah. With your help, we can continue well past 800 episodes to many, many more. Please head over to This Week in Science. Purchase our calendars. Our calendars are there, ready for 2021. We got to start planning ahead or just looking at a year, another year. I, they're beautiful pictures. Blair has drawn beautiful pictures for the Blair's Animal Corner 2021 twist calendar. So head over to twist.org. You're welcome. And click on that horny frog over on the sidebar and purchase your calendars today. Also, while you're there, maybe click on that Patreon link and choose a level for your support to keep twists bringing sanity and science, well, and tongue eating maybe, to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to more people like you. Thank you for your support. We really can't do this without you. Also, also, if you if you're like many uh, of us who threw away our 2020 calendar at some point because we were so frustrated, you may actually be able to request a, a a 2020 calendar to get to the end of the year. Now that things are looking a little bit brighter, it might be possible. <laughs> might be possible. I don't know about that. Justin, hey, uh -oh. you got some stories for us. Uh, yeah, I've got uh, a couple of stories left here in the uh, quiver. A study conducted by University of London professor Christoph Bruecker and his team reveal how micro-structured micro finlets, finlets on owl feathers, enable silent flight. So they uh, published this in the Institute of Physics Journal, Bioinspiration in Biomimetics in a paper titled Flow Turning Effect and Laminar Control by the 3D Curvature of Leading Edge Serrations from Alwing. Research outlines their translation of detailed geometry of owl feathers into biomimetic aerofoil to study aerodynamic effect on the special filaments at the leading edge of the feather. So uh, there might be a, an image you can pull up, but it turns out that the leading edge of an of an owl wing has these strange tiny mm -hmm. hairs, these little filaments that line it all the way along. Yeah. And they thought that these would produce vortexes. They thought this mm -hmm. might be some something that would sort of enable the you know passage of air above or below or pressure thing. It might help the energy conservation of a of an owl's flight. But it turns out there were no vortices. In fact, the, uh, these these finlets act as these weird guide vanes because they have this little curvature to them, and they create a regular array. Uh, the regular array of the finlets along the wingspan turn flow direction near the wall and keep the flow for longer and with greater stability. And it actually avoids turbulence. It's a turbulence disruptor. One of the things. That is a potential outcome of this, then, is more silent flight, which 
if you're an owl, mm -hmm. seeing at night, sneaking up on that errant rodent that stayed up a little too late, exactly what you want is silent flight as you descend from the heavens to grab your prey in your talons. And... Yeah, and that's one of one of the questions about owl flight how exactly mm -hmm. are they so quiet compared mm -hmm. to other birds and yes yeah, so this this might be the secret of the owl wing exposed uh they also think they might be able to make quieter aircraft uh based on fuzzy the... make them fuzzy <laughs> I know, that's what i but was yeah, thinking but, well, you can sort of <laughs> i just like, pictured oh, a, a a plane that looked like the car in dumb and dumber <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah covered in fur <laughs> Cover it in fur. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, we, uh, oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, no, no. I used to take um, vulture feathers and owl feathers to classrooms when I would bring an owl to the classroom. And you'd wave the vulture feather and go, shoom, 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 shoom. And then you'd wave the owl feather. And nothing. Nothing at all. Wow. Yeah. And so, yeah, this is something that. Um, if only we, you had been more observant at the time, you could have published this study. Well, we knew it, you know, it's common knowledge in the animal that field it, that it has to do with the little fuzziness, but exactly okay. what it's doing to the air is the new information. So that's actually very interesting. You're way ahead. Like the, 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 the direct observationists are always way ahead of the, <laughs> of the research. That always seems to be a thing. Mm -hmm. Like here's something we just discovered that has been known for a thousand years, but not understood why. And now yeah, we have the mechanism. Exactly. Yeah, the why. The why is pretty important. That's how you end up with fuzzy planes. It's great. <laughs> I think it would be awesome to have little fl little fluffy plane wings. Would, would they be, be fluffy or would they be like velour? I don't know. Like little tiny eyelashes, maybe? Yes, covered yeah. in eyelashes. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I just pictured like in a Mel Brooks movie, like a giant mascara wand before you take out. <laughs> <laughs> You really are an old person in a young, <laughs> in a young, young person's body. This is true. Oh my! <laughs> ah, what else you got there, Justin? Uh, I have a team of researchers at the University of Maryland's Department of Computer Science. They have demonstrated that popular robotic household vacuum cleaners—they weren't specific, but you're going to know what they're talking about. Uh, robot vacuum cleaners can be remotely hacked to operate as spying microphones. It has a so, microphone in it? I didn't even know that. Yeah, it does. An unintentional one. So they collected information from the laser-based navigation system and uh, vacuum cleaner robots and applied signal processing and deep learning techniques to recover speech as well as identify television programs that were playing in the same room as the device was operating. This is uh, research demonstrates a potential. This is actually not a new technology exactly, but this is demonstrating the potential that any device that uses light detection and ranging LIDAR technology to be manipulated into collecting sound. Despite the fact that it doesn't, have an intentionally built-in microphone. So uh, this work was presented at the Association for Computing Machineries Conference of Embedded Network Sensor Systems, SENSIZE 2020. It's a huge event. If you didn't make it, it's, it's okay. It's same every year. Totally. Uh, anyway, uh, so this is, this is basically a technology that's been around since the 40s. And espionage using a laser on a, on a, usually on a sheer surface, like a window or something. Right? You, you shine the laser at the window and then people are talking in there and that, that laser is reverberating a little bit from that surface and that's translatable into audio. This is uh, according to Nirupam Roy, who's the assistant professor at the University of Maryland's Department of Com Computer Science. We welcome these devices into our homes and we don't think anything about it. But we have shown that even though these devices don't have microphones, we can repurpose the systems they use for navigation, to spy on conversations, and potentially reveal private information. So, 
Everything in our homes is going to spy on us now in various ways. We've got hackable Internet of Things. We've got a refrigerator that's spying on us. Our vacuum cleaner is going to spy on us. Our printer allows the hackers in to be able to spy on us. (sighs) That was what I was going to ask. Like, if we already have these, why are they even messing with the vacuum? I feel like this is a way easier way. (laughs) To, to find out exactly what I'm shopping for online. <laughs> Corporate secrets, man. Corporate secrets. So so the things that uh, allowed some of the objects in the household that were effective at allowing them to hack this uh, robot's LiDAR and translate it. Uh, trash can, cardboard box, a takeout container, a polypropylene bag. Uh, things that they found that were on the floor of this uh, of this place were really good at bouncing signal at a reliable enough rate for them to translate with ninety percent accuracy. This isn't this isn't this garbled message of like oh I heard it sounded like a word was said or ninety percent accuracy they could identify what was being said. So the Roombas are minute- like bats. They're like bats in our houses. From a minute's <laughs> worth of recording, they also had 90% accuracy in identifying what television show is playing. Yeah. Hmm. So, okay, so uh, what's the company that used to put the little boxes in households around around the country to figure out what people were watching and whether or not they were watching oh, advertisements? Nielsen? Nielsen. Nielsen. Yeah. Yes. Nielsen's going to hack your Roomba. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have any other way now. Oh, there yeah. probably are still Nielsen families, but those are the only people actually still watching TV. Yeah. They're all the Nielsen families because <laughs> they have to. Now. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's fascinating. I, I Just the way it's be, the way they were able to do it is really, I mean, that, that's some, that's some thinking to be able to take the lidar and the reflections of sound off of objects to be able to detect speech. I mean, yeah. if you are a motivated spy, there you go. I'm glad I you guess. listened to Twist. Now you have a new little tool in your spy tool case. All right. There's uh yeah uh, another uh, level of that too where this wasn't this wasn't part of the audio translation but they also they uh, found that they could get a map of the residence like the furniture where everything is because these uh, these robots make a, they they don't they not just acting on instinct every time they go out there or not just reacting based on lidar and you know they actually create a map of your residence. And that stores somewhere. And if you access that, you also have a layout of your place, where all the furniture is, where the stuff is, all that kind of thing. Right. You'll so be able a lot to of, know a lot of yeah. information you you may not realize that your your vacuum cleaner is collecting on you. Goodness gracious! Goodness gracious! Okay. I hope people have been collecting twists since the beginning, all 800 episodes. There are a few of you who've been out there and listened to them all. We had some wonderful responses from people this week. Uh, Blair put a little call out to Twitter for people to uh, let us know what their favorite moments, their favorite, favorite, uh, favorite things from twists for the last 800 episodes Mm -hmm. have been. What are those fond memories of Twists? Dr. Jens Full, he was a guest on Twists, several several shows back now, and he says, congrats on Twists 800. Being interviewed on Twists was an incredibly fun experience. And as I've mentioned before, it gave me a push toward embracing my SciComm side, especially with Blair's encouragement which is now my new career and makes me very happy. Nice. On to the next 800. Blair, yes. we made a Psycomer. I, I mean, I'm so proud. <laughs> Yay! It's like a very successful one, too, which is like... 
so great. So great. Magnus Apollo wrote, oh my gosh, 800? It's been such a long and crazy ride. Thank you for this and for helping lead the way for science education and sharing wonderful facts about the cosmos. You are all amazing. Todd Northcutt said, so proud to have journeyed with you. I've u- I used to travel a lot for work and Twist was always my companion. I've listened to episodes while in Japan, Sweden, Norway, Germany, China, and the UK, starting right after Justin joined in 2005 or 2006. Looking forward to 800 more. Then we had one from Rafe Langston, and Rafe wrote in, around 09 or 10, I downloaded my first episode of Twist Science, and all I recall is Jackson Fly saying, I don't know. Maybe I am demented. And that was the line. (laughs) But for some reason, hooked me on the show. (laughs) He said, at first, no idea what the story was, but I've been listening ever since. And I wrote back and wanted to figure it out and said, I wish I knew what that story would have been. It might not have been a story. Uh, It might have have just been me admitting publicly. Well, we've all suspected all along about ourselves oh, individually. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I, we all could be demented. How would we know if we were demented? It would be things would other be? people knew about us. But this show is brought to you. never occur to us. <laughs> well, he ended up finding it. And wow. so we have this story oh, no. from... <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's make sure I can cue it up correctly. He found it. It was from September 2nd, 2010. Let's see if I can get this going. Working out your brain? It's good. Huh? It's supposed to keep dementia at bay, right? I don't know. It seems Do to lead those, to it. Go to museums, <laughs> read books, have interesting conversations with people. This is the Groovy cross- Sciencey Podcast. Right. Do crossword puzzles, all that kind of thing. Um, well, the, the research is in that, yeah, yeah, it delays dementia, definitely. But if you're going to get dementia, it's not going to stop it. And once the dementia sets in, you actually become demented at a much faster rate than if you <laughs> didn't do anything. But... Kind of the the key point here, though. I mean, it's like, oh, great, my brain worked longer. So the- disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. The rest of this show may lead to dementia. Right. Well, that's the way it could be spun, totally. But that's not not the the way that it really works. I mean, doing all the mental push ups will keep your brain healthier longer. So your quality of life will be, and your quality of mental capacity will be better longer, but then when you get dementia, it's going to happen whether or not you do anything. You know, it's going to happen. So it's like, do you not want to do anything and have the slow decline over a long period of time? Or do you want to do stuff and be interested and try and use your brain and like have a good, happy brain for a lot longer and then be like, and bam, demented. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you have a choice. You have a choice. <laughs> Which I think is interesting. I think I'd make a good demented person. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if anybody. Yeah, are could... you sure you you're not already a little? The thing yeah. is, like, I wonder if I could tell the difference. <laughs> like, maybe externally you could tell the difference, but if you if you become yourself demented, do you really know that you're demented, or does this, oh, does wow. this just seem rational to you? Mm. And then does everybody else? Because if you're thinking along demented lines, does everybody else suddenly seem very irrational? Yes. Like there's something wrong with them. <laughs> yes, that's exactly could, it. Okay, mm-hmm. I could see myself. I might already be demented. Then. <laughs> Good self-diagnosis. I, I, find, I like this. I find much of what I see around me as irrational. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Give me another story, dude. So, so wait, that's ten years ago, and absolutely nothing has changed in my perspective of the world. I have evolved not a, not an iota from that past self. We yeah, are you're still, still one demented. And the same, and I, I didn't remember the story, but I had the same take on dementia ten years ago that I had now 
And even actually 10 years ago of me even finished the point, which is that if you're demented, you think other people are really demented, which I feel all the time. All the time. So. <laughs> Blair and I didn't little want to did, tell little, you. Little did ten year me, <laughs> year ago me realize. That's why Kiki brought me on. How strong that feeling really would be. How oh, strong. Wow. <laughs> but I do want to. I do want to thank Rafe for that return, that blast to the, oh, the past. That was yeah. that was very very fun. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Fred uh, Fred 104 said the shenanigans obviously likes the shenanigans. Also the original interviews with the biologist that did a microbiota transplant on himself and the interview during the fledgling research of ketamine for major depressive di disorder and how it affected neur neur neurons. Many more, but those stuck out immediately. Yes, the microbiome research, that was Josiah Zayner and uh, had him back on the show recently when both of you were gone. Yeah, that was a great was... conversation. Yeah. 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 And the uh, the ketamine research, that was a doctor from up here in the Pacific Northwest, Enrique, um, blanking on his last name, but yeah, he has ketamine clinics to help people with depression. What does Fred say? Also, our shouting convos, and this is all in caps because Shouty Blair. <laughs> what on are you talking about? Yeah. Meeting Dr. Kiki randomly. We met at a robot film festival in San Francisco many years back. There you go. And all the sponsored by Ju Dr. Justin, not a doctor, not a real doctor. <laughs> <laughs> We do. We have had some. We have had some. We have had some fun. A little we bit have. of fun. Also, I all have... the sponsorship checks uh, you receive from Doctor Jackson, not Doctor Justin, not a real doctor, should not <laughs> actually be attempted to be cashed, as they may result in uh... felony charges for both of us. <laughs> All right. Matt and Lexi wrote and said, congratulations on the 800th. I'm super happy to know that my dearest friend. Uh, Jens was on your show. Anything that Jens does is a fave of mine. I'd love to be on your show too someday with Jens on it too. <laughs> so we have a request for an, for an interview. Matt and Lexi do MRI education, it looks like. MRI people. Hmm. Eventually we're going to have everyone on the you show. You like brain imaging. We'll have everybody we're gonna have on the everyone show eventually. We're going to be on the show eventually. This is just yeah. the first 800. In the chat room, I saw Phil Plate, the bad astronomer. He's been on the show. Kishore Hari, he has not been on the show, has been a science communication friend for a long time going back. Um, I don't know if he's still there in the chat room, uh, but he's, he's listened, I know, for a very long time. And I know so many of you here have really been a part of what we're what we do here at twists for so long and it's awesome blair justin yes. do you have any favorite moments favorite things my favorite thing selfishly is that i have people who actually want my art i have a reason to do art i have a reason to make it and uh if you asked me 10 years ago if I would be doing art on a regular basis and people would like want it, <laughs> I never would have believed you. Um, I mean, it all started with that originally being my plan as a career and then being told that I couldn't have that career because I'm colorblind and then me realizing as an adult that that's stupid, but also having other interests. <laughs> and then so somehow this science podcast became a way for me to do and produce art, which is insane and amazing. And I'm so thankful. And I can't believe people are still buying it. I saw somebody tweeted today that they got their twist masks. They were happy to have them and had my woolly mammoth on there. And it's great. It's a huge gift. So thank you to all of you for that, for making me feel supported in my passion. We support you. Keep arting. I'll keep, keep arting. Keep arting. Yes. Justin? 
I think my my favorite moment from the show was not during the show. Okay. Uh, I was working in the genomics department of a biotech company, and they were doing a tour of UC Davis students. And uh, they stopped by my station where I was operating the the sequencers. And they go, and oh, and... Uh, and he also uh, does a science show. Uh, and then a bunch of them raised their hands. We're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I watch it all the time. Or yeah, I listened to that on the. And they like, <laughs> they like knew the show. And knew, uh, knew, and the person who was introducing was like, didn't realize like that was going to happen. But they all knew who uh, had all been listening to the show because it rebroadcasts over the campus airwaves still. So that was that was pretty cool to know that. That, that feedback you get when you know that. Oh, my other favorite moment is every time we've gone on location and met the listeners in those towns and got to hang out and socialize. Uh, it's always been a great time. Yeah. I like uh, I like the friends we've met along the way. Uh, it's been that's been probably the biggest the biggest influence. Uh, and we lost we lost a really dear friend this year and Ed and Ed was Ed was a, a, a good friend me and Ed we talked uh, beyond science we went and talked a lot of politics together we talked a lot of uh, science as well uh, and he is definitely missed he's I think I would say uh, our longest time listener because according to Ed he started listening before the podcast he's some it's either, it's either found I think Ed, Ed and Ed and Pamela, there. Yeah. Ed, Pamela, yeah. uh, and Patrick, maybe. And Patrick. I think mm -hmm. Patrick might have gotten a, a, in pre, the uh, pre podcast do the old school IRC uh, links or whatever. But uh, oh, well, I also have to real quick um, throw a shout out to my dad if he is watching or listening uh, because he's yes. the reason I'm here because he came well, up yeah, to me obviously one day. He's your dad. Well, besides that, he's the oh, reason yeah. I'm in Twist because. He came up to me one day or we were talking on the phone or something. He was like, hey, so do you know about these things, podcasts? And like, I, I, I didn't yet. I didn't have an iPhone yet. So I didn't know. Me and Blair's dad there. are the same age, by the way. What's a podcast? No, 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 no. You're not the same age. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, he was telling me about these things called podcasts. And you say I was listening to this podcast that was in the, you know, suggested science podcasts. And I, I love it. And they just put a call out for an intern and I think you should do it. So I had to like adopt the podcast lifestyle, listen to a couple episodes and then psych myself up to think that I could actually communicate science <laughs> and then go ahead and email Kiki without twists in the subject line. So I got spam filtered and then finally we met up for coffee and then it's history. But yeah, it was all him. He pushed, pushed, he pushed me in the best way possible. Thank you, dad. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Pat. Thanks to Blair's dad. Yeah. And for the t-shirts he has silk screened for us over the years. And um, yeah, he's listened for a long time. So mm -hmm. thanks for listening. So many of you, I'm looking at the names in the chat and I'm looking at people in our YouTube and Facebook and Twitch chat that I can see here. Thank you for being here with us. And thank you for bringing us to 800 episodes. I hope that you're here with us for many more because there's so much more science. Mm -hmm. The science keeps on coming. Knowledge evolves, right? Yeah. We got to keep up with it. And sometimes I kind of go, wow, how did we go from this crazy idea drinking beer and talking about science on a hot summer night in Davis, California on a balcony to 20 years and over 800 episodes, 800 podcast episodes yeah. of This Week in Science. So thank you all. Yeah, it's, it's not possible without all of you. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an, an amazing conversation to have because it doesn't end and while occasionally we feel like we're repeating themes, the subject matter is always uh, new and fresh, and the insights are new and fresh and different. 
I can't think of another thing that you could talk about this much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's always changing. and But at the yeah. same time, we can go back to some things from years ago and say, huh, oh, this is a little bit, little bit different. We've been talking about this issue for over a decade. This is where it is now. We've been talking mm-hmm. about this thing for this long now. This is where it is now. And we, you know, over the history, we are now at a point where we can have that perspective to be able to track the progress of something so that stories are not just for for me anyway stories very often are not just an individual story they actually tie into a research landscape and that and that's much deeper and uh, much more interesting but you know there's there's always going to be a a tongue eater in there somewhere yeah <laughs> keep it spicy you know spice it up okay <laughs> i'm i'm still like i'm like a little concerned with the fact that my perspective and take on things has not changed <laughs> the entire course of the- you are who you are man <laughs> no like uh what was it we were talking about this some months ago where we're talking about like uh people who think of the word versus people think of the image and Kiki, you said, uh, apple, what do you think of? And I said, you know, a green apple with these little brown dots. And you're like, that's exactly what you said last time we talked about this a decade ago, I'm like, I, which I didn't remember. <laughs> and I went back and I found that episode. Oh, jeez. Like, oh, my goodness. I have not changed the picture of an apple in my head <laughs> ever. It's just locked in there with some real permanence. Some things don't change. No. I'm really, I, I, I'm hoping that my my presentation skills have changed over the years. I think I, I swear I almost you. didn't recognize your voice uh, yeah. you know, when you played that first episode. And what's really amazing is that I sounded a lot like my 17 year old son. Yeah. Oh and wow! That, like like the articulations and everything and the way I was was very. Un- unlike what I how I speak now, but very much like how he speaks. Wow. Yeah, get a load of this one. Get a load of this one. Good morning. Welcome to this week in science yet again. Back with more science for your technological earlobes. <laughs> We're here in the station for the next hour. We'd like to thank the analyst and Janie Venom, who were... Uh, no, no, not Jamie Venom. What am I talking about? Klinger, who is visiting on um, on the analyst's show this last couple of hours. Thank them for a great morning wake-up call. And um, we'd like to get on to our own stuff. If you want to join us down here in the studio over the next half hour, the phone number is 530-752-2777. Or you can also... Check out various websites, www.kdvs.org. That's still there. The radio station's KDVS. website where you can access been there. forums and also archived shows, the show schedules, all sorts of information about wonderful goings-on here at KDVS. www.thisweekinscience.com is our website where we have updates about the show itself and our goings-on in the science world. And maybe t-shirts. And maybe t-shirts. We're not sure. You have to go and look for yourself <laughs> but, you know. To find out. <laughs> you would. We've, we've got an exciting show today. We've been promising for a long time. We have a very exciting show today. We're very, we're very excited about today's show, at least. I haven't slept in three days, so. <laughs> He's lying. <laughs> I don't know if anything would keep him from sleeping. <laughs> yes, I, I do sleep the sleep of angels <laughs> a ins- every night. <laughs> Somnambulistic. Um, anywho, nine o'clock today, we've got Brian Green, Doctor Brian Green from Columbia University, who is a supermodel of science in my vision of the world. He's going to walk the physics catwalk for us. That's right. Tell us a little bit about string theory and. Space time. Gravity Space time. and yeah. why rainbows. He's going to cover everything today. Yeah, we've had a lot of... That's been the second half. Uh, we talked to Brian Green, and Justin asked him about his oceanic space theory that episode. It's 
great. There was a period of time when we did interviews, and oh wait, it's still that way. Justin's like, I got a physicist in front of me. I'm going to ask him what I don't know. Tell me the answers. <laughs> it's your job to fill in all of the blanks. Fill in all the blanks in my theory of the universe. Yes. Oh, my goodness. But I'm trying to think about, I think my voice has deepened a little. I was talking a little more breathily. I had a very, very, uh, what is it? The, the kind of voice where it like, you know, it was different. Different. (laughs) I was a different person. That was another yeah. lifetime ago, that I think. Ago. That was a long time ago. Okay. Are we going to play a game in yes. the after show? Da 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 I think it might be fun for our podcast audience to hear it. Let's do it. Okay. All right. So I'm sharing. All right. Twist trivia. Trivia time. All right. So um, the people who who are watching um, live, don't type your answers into the chat because that'll give it away to Justin and Kiki. Justin and Kiki. um, (laughs) If you. If you We're have if you have a piece of paper nearby, I should have set this up better. If you have a piece of paper nearby, you should write it down right. um, or type it in your phone or something just so oh, you can reveal your yeah. answer. Okay, you ready I for the first question? Up trees. I'm ready. Great. Okay, first question. According to the TWIS Wikipedia, TWIS has Got listeners it. in how many countries? later well i yeah, we're supposed to it? is justin trying to hang on i'm trying to get uh my chat thing to respond to oh you are could you write it, it out chat. are you looking it up on the twist wiki no are you looking I'm, it up I'm right cheating. Uh, blair the pub quiz host will disqualify <laughs> you just so you know all right um so uh we'll just do it this way kiki what do you think 80 and justin said 51 Area 51 the answer yeah. is 60. 60. Ooh. I, I'm closer. I without going I don't over. know if that is at all accurate, but that is what it says. Closer without Wikipedia. going over. So that's what it said. It's probably right. the number I put down at one point. Yeah. <laughs> I've never updated. So also, it's according to the Twist Wikipedia, oh. when did Justin join the team? What year? So again, I don't know if this oh, is accurate. I know this, one. this is I know just this one. what it says in the Wikipedia. I know the month too. Okay, write the write the year in the chat room, Justin. Oh, just the year? Yeah, just the year. Wow, well, I got. The, I'll do month and year. So I already got it queued up. Okay. And there's a lag. So Kiki, what's your so, answer? So that episode from the podcast was 2005, uh-huh. and Justin and I. In one of the episodes I was listening to today, he said he'd been uh, with hanging out on the show for the past year, so 2004. But I think I probably got it wrong and put 2005 on the Twist Wiki. <laughs> 2005. <laughs> oh, the Wiki is incorrect. Okay. Because I distinctly remember creating, uh, d- doing an election show. Uh, although I guess I don't know if that was just as a guest guest as opposed to a uh, temporary sub in fill in guest until she could find an actual co host, which would have been yeah. most of 2005 and 2006. Fair. <laughs> okay, so Kiki, I didn't know you wrote you wrote the Wikipedia. I didn't know that. So. I might have. Yeah, unfair. So you're going to be disqualified from this question. I want everyone in the chat room to answer, including Justin. Mm -hmm. What is Dr. Kiki's BS in, according to the Wikipedia also? Because I I thought someone else wrote it. So I was like, I wonder if this is But this is Wikipedia, though, not the website. Correct. Yes. No, I did not write the Wikipedia entry. Oh, you didn't. Then you can guess, too. 
No, but I think I referred, I think for the Justin answer, I ah. had said 2005 many times because the podcast and go. Justin kind of merged. Okay, so if you think there's a chance <laughs> that, you know, I, mm. it's kind of up in the air, you can throw it in there. So this is the bachelor's. This isn't bachelor's. the PhD. Yeah. What is my bachelor's degree? I'm still going to say neurophysiology. Okay, so Justin says neurophysiology. Farah says biology. It's very just g- general biology, which I don't even think UC Davis offers. Um, Shubru <laughs> says biochemistry. Life sciences? Is that can you just be that general? No. I think there's a life science. No. Well, UC Davis know, is way more special. Than me. I know what my BS is in. A whole bunch of BS. The answer is Bird conservation study. biology. Oh. Yay. Wildlife yeah. and conservation biology, to be exact. Oh, well, this is what it says in Wikipedia. <laughs> it says conservation. Okay. All right. According to twist.org, Justin founded the Institute of Reason at what this age? This I know. This I know because it actually happened. This oh. one I know because it actually happened. When so did people you? in the okay. chat room, feel free to join. I don't think I know this. Okay. I was very... This is on. It. This is on my this, website. This is an actual thing that happened, so I know this. I think I'm gonna say age six. Close. Father said nine. Let's see, Shubru said twenty three. Carol Ann says fifteen. <laughs> Forced to resign at age eight. The answer is age seven. Oh, it's close. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> so- I made it a rule that only seven-year-olds should be responsible for the future because we had more at stake and were smarter than six-year-olds so that we had a better understanding of the world. So we were uh-huh. right at the prime spot right to on the make all the decisions for the world. Unfortunately, uh, it was very successful. Uh, only at the, When I turned eight, I was forced out of the Institute of Reason uh, <laughs> for being too old. Mm-hmm. You're too old. You're not reasonable anymore. Yeah. Okay, out. this I'm actually really proud of this. I had to do some research for this. Okay, so if you go to twist.org and you look oh. at our broadcasts. Okay, what episode number was my very first appearance? Your first appearance? My first appearance. The first Not time you first. heard my voice. Yes. Was it episode 356, episode 212, or episode 583? Um... I want to say it's 356. I feel like you've been around for a long time. Like, I almost don't remember, like, those audio clips we heard earlier. I almost can't imagine the time when you were not part of the show. That's very sweet. (laughs) Well, uh, no, I don't don't mean to be sweet about it. I know you're not meaning to be sweet, but... (laughs) I feel my heart feels warm, and I was three hundred fifty-six. Uh, we both agree then. Yep. Yes. yes. Okay, so my first appearance was on January twelfth, twenty twelve. I had to find it. Yeah. Um, and in that episode, when I was introduced, Justin said he would get me a hippo for Christmas the next year, but he did not. <laughs> Blair has been bitter ever since. <laughs> now, no, actually, fair, I just I listened to it today, and I. To be fair, it. I did try, but I got caught going over the wall of the zoo mm. in Sacramento. And by the way, mm. they don't have the way, hippos in Sacramento. No, not anymore. They haven't for a long time, yeah. which is also very embarrassing because I got right to where the hippo had been, uh-huh. but I kept looking for it. But it's been gone for it had been gone for like a decade. <laughs> All right, next one. What is Dr. Kiki's PhD in? Specificity, please. Specificity. I know what it is specifically. <laughs> is it neurophysiology, uh, life science? I, all, I, I rarely I always mess this up. Say the entire. Neuro- it's a lot of words. Biology. It's a mouthful. Neurobiological. <laughs> I always shorten inter- it because it's easier for consumption if it's not ah, all can i can thing. i ju- can i say brain science the answer is <laughs> molecular, molecular cellular and integrative physiology is that it 
it is. That's oh, I'll never degree. remember that. That's my PhD. Or as uh, Hot Rod says in the chat room, her PhD is in bird brains. So bird brains. <laughs> there's yes. that. Yeah. <laughs> many okay. zebra finch brains. I, yeah, many zebra so finch brains. So now I moved to the Dr. Kiki Wikipedia. <laughs> So according to the Kiki Sanford wiki, I know that one. Where was Dr. Kiki born? Which I didn't know. Dun, dun, dun. I knew where you spent your childhood, but yes. I clearly did not know where you were born. Unless I'm wrong. I might be wrong. I think I, I think I know this one. Nope. Justin, you're wrong. Oh, what? I know. Santa Rosa. Oh, that's where Idaho. I was born. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, uh, I should have just put, I should have gotten more. See, always answer questions more generally. I should have just said California. The first two and a half, three years of my life, I lived in uh, Monterio on the huh. Russian River. Oh, and that's awesome. yeah, and so Santa Rosa was the closest, the closest hospital when my mom was ah. Yep. Okay, so this is another one I had to do some poking around for. So according to twist.org, the episode listings there, which of the following have been mentioned more times? Now, this is based on mentions in the Ooh, show notes. Interesting. Okay. Is it spiders, pandas, or squirrels? Oh, in show notes. Ooh, this is tricksy. So my guess is that the show notes stopped happening at some point. I, I, They've uh, never stopped. up right now. <laughs> uh, and, and to the point where I know we talked a lot about spider silk uh, in the beginning. And pandas and squirrels are so, it's all, the pandas and squirrels is all Blair, which is like, but that's like most of the episodes. Did you, did you find this by using the search bar she or was this the by the categories? Because the all right, I'm going with spiders. Search bar. Final answer. Spiders, final answer. What's Kiki uh, say? We got lots of spiders in the chat room also. I know. Spiders. Yeah, you were... Going with it. Spiders. The oh, answer is spiders. Oh, me. Spiders have 115 episode listings, pandas have 30, and squirrels have 20. We see um, the favorites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, we just have a few more here. Um, what was the original name for Blair's Animal Quarter? Wait, it wasn't Blair's Animal Quarter? No, Justin has named it both times, but it had a different name. It was actually my second episode was the first time I brought a story. And I think Kiki told me to bring one story and I brought two. <laughs> and I think I was like, which one? You're like, do both. And so um, Justin uh, coined the really term. Name it both times? Yes. What would I have named it if not Blair's Animal Corner? Blair's amazing animal kingdom. <laughs> okay, so that's Justin's guess. Blair's blue planet. <laughs> Blair's better than David Attenborough. The intern's corner. Intern's corner. <laughs> Yipes. Is that all I have to you? <laughs> Blair's animal insights. Blair's... <sighs> The uh, oh gosh, Blair's, Blair's uh, story the, time. Blair's new tycoon. I don't know. Blair's, what I'm gonna I? say I'm, it, Blair's story, story time. time with Blair. <laughs> it was called animal. Blair's Animal House. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, why did that take too long? Oh, so my the first time I did that, as I said, it was the the second episode I was ever on. It was January nineteenth, <laughs> and it was about eye eyes and their fing their long fingers. Yeah. Oh, that was what that was your first story. I should have. Yes. And you recently had another I I story. Yeah. The, that was yeah. Here I can. I'm gonna share Weirdo the link. I eyes in the chat room. Oh, that's funny. Weirdo I eyes. Here it is. All right. Um, just a couple oh, more. There's bestiary. That would have been nice. <laughs> According to twist.org/slash/youtube, which of the following is not a twist short? Ooh. By title, Neurogaming, Blair's Sperm Update, 
Okay, that's one of them. <laughs> for sure. Do plants that's, that's, that's have no memory? <laughs> that's one. Palcohol. Ooh, I don't know what that means. Shark smells. And Ooh. celebrate the octopus. It's got to be one. Uh, I don't know, which isn't. Celebrate the octopus. I'm going to go with the shark smells. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Um, it was a trick. They're all oh! true stories. <laughs> oh! I You're was... tricky. I know. Well, it's, you know, just to let everyone know, there are 15 twist shorts on our YouTube page. They're all very fun and silly. So check them all out. They're I all there. I haven't seen one of them. We filmed a bunch of things on location, which is great because you can't go anywhere right now. So you can live through us vicariously in the past. All right. Um, uh, next to last question. According to twist.org, which of the following have been mentioned more times? So this is also based on search. Poop or I, brains? I'm just going to... Poop brains. brains. What about poop brains? However... <laughs> However, I feel like I feel this like this is a contest. I feel like this is largely a contest between uh, me and Kiki. Uh, who is uh, who, Kiki? Has likely said brains. The vast majority of the time, brains have been mentioned. Yeah, I have likely said poop. The vast majority of the times that poop has been mentioned, <laughs> I feel like she talks a slight bit more than me. So I will say it's brains. Okay. I, yeah, I'm gonna if if this is stuff written in the show notes, brains. Yes. Uh, the answer is brains by a oh, lot. Yes. So poop oh, is only mentioned in the show notes fifty times. Brains, four hundred and fifteen. Priorities, people. Priorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and um, here is the very or zombies, people. Yeah. Zombies. Zombies. yeah. Uh, the very last <laughs> question. Again, this is based on the Wikipedia. So this is not necessarily accurate, but according to the I Wikipedia, I have it. no memory. What so things year? I have said in public should not be trusted. <laughs> according to the Wikipedia, what year was Twist founded? Oh, uh, I got 2000. It. Maybe. Hang on, hang on. Wait for it. It's uh, eventually going to show up in the chat. There's a big delay. Hot Rod said 2004. Justin says 1999. According to the Wikipedia, 1999. Yeah. Bam, bam, bam. I can't do this. There you go. Can you do the and Rocky that's... theme song? I can't. No, it's not the Rocky Twist theme song. A... Everybody's gonna bomb. I'll die any day. Bam. Bam, bam, bam. I can't do the 1999 theme song. It's, it's oh, Prince, hard. 1999. Yeah, that takes some, that takes some doing, some skill. Thank you for that, Blair. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was great incredible. to have a trivia master run you through <laughs> trivia. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. I haven't run a pub quiz in like probably four years, so I love that. Fun. That was fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And oh my gosh, we're still in the show. <laughs> Maybe we should <laughs> close it up. it up. And on that, it is the end of the show. We've made it to the end, everyone. Oh. What? After uh, show? Before we get to the end of the show, we have to remind people that there is an after show and we're going to have a little fun there too. But uh, yeah, let's get to this end of the show. Get to the after we'll show. Get there. We'll get to the after show. We will. Everyone, thank you for joining us for another episode, our 800th episode. I do hope you enjoyed the show. Shout outs. We have shout outs to people who helped the show. Thank you to Fada for all of your help with show notes and social media and doing all the great stuff that you do to just keep things going. Thank you so much for all of your work. Thank you to Gord McLeod for manning that chat room. Thank you for keeping our web chat running and a safe place to be for everyone. And Identity4, thank you so much for recording the show so that we've got show to put out for everyone. Thank you so much. Also, thank you to Patreon and uh, the Burroughs Welcome Cunt Fund for their support, their generous support. 
<sighs> Let's see if I can get the right screens open here. Thank you, too. Chris Wozniak, Dave Bunn, Vegard Chefstad, Hal Snyder, Donathan Stiles, a.k.a. Don Stylo, John Scioli, Guillaume, John Lee, Ali Coffin, Maddie Perrin, Gaurav Sharma, Shu Brew, Sarah Forfar, Darwin Hannon, Donald Mundus, Stephen Alberon, Daryl Myshak, Stu Pollock, Andrew Swanson, Fred S. 104, Corinne Benton, Sky Luke, Paul Ronovich, Bed Ben Gnell, Kevin Reardon, Noodles Jack, Brian Carrington, Matt Bass, Josh Fury, Sean and Nina Lamb, John McKee, Greg Riley, Mark Hessenflo, Gene Tellier, Steve Leesman, a.k.a. Z. Zima, Ken Hayes, Howard Tan, Christopher Rappin, Richard, Brendan Minish, Melisande, Johnny Gridley, Flying Out, Richard Porter, Christopher Dreyer, Mark Massaros, Artyom, Greg Briggs, John Atwood, Melania is a Russian super spy, Rudy Garcia, Dave Wilkinson, Rodney Lewis, Paul, Matt Sutter, Philip Shane, Kurt Larson, Craig Landon, Mountain Sloth, Jim Trapo, Alex Wilson, Sarah Chavis, John Ratnaswamy, Sue Doster, Jason Olds, Dave Neighbor, Eric Knapp, E.O., Kevin Parachan, Aerith Luthen, Steve DeBell, Bob Calder, Marjorie, Paul Stanton, Patrick Pecoraro, Paul Disney, Ben Rothig, Gary S., Tony Steele, Ulysses Adkins, Brian Condren, Jason Roberts, and Dave Friedel. Thank you so much for all of your support on Patreon. And if any of you are out there are interested in supporting us, you can find information at twist.org. Click that Patreon link. On next week's show, oh, it's twist giving time next week. It's time to give give thanks. We're all, all, always giving thanks. So much gratitude. And we will be back, of course, then on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific time, broadcasting live from our YouTube and Facebook uh, studios. As well as twist.org, something forward, backward, slash, live, try both. I don't know which one it is. I can't tell them apart. It's a backslash. Uh, no, want to listen to us uh, as a podcast? Uh, you get to miss out on all this fun up here, but still, you maybe you get to multitask while you listen. Just search for This Week in Science wherever podcasts are found. If you enjoyed the show, please also get your friends to subscribe to the podcast as well. For more information on anything you've heard here today, show notes and links to stories will be available on our website, www.twist.org. And you can also sign up for a newsletter. You can also contact us directly. Email Kirsten at Kirsten at thisweekinscience.com, Justin at twistminion at gmail.com, or me, Blair, at blairbaz at twist.org. Just be sure to put twist, T-W-I-S, in that subject line, or your email will be spam filtered into a time vortex, and it'll show up in 1999. No one will get it. Yeah. Uh, if bird voices are your thing, you can tweet at us on Twitter, where we are at Twist Science, at Dr. Kiki, at Jackson Flying, at Blair's Menagerie. We love your feedback. If there is a topic you would like us to cover or address, a suggestion for an interview, a haiku that comes to you in the night, please let us know. We'll be back here next week for 801, and we hope you'll join us again for more great science news. But if you learned anything from this show, remember. It's all in your head. This week in science. This week in science. This week in science, it's the end of the world. So I'm setting up shop, got my banner unfurled. It says the scientist is in, I'm gonna sell my advice. Show them how to stop the robots with a simple device. I'll reverse global warming with a wave of my hand. And all it'll cost you is a couple of grand. is coming your way so everybody listen to what i say i use the scientific method for all that it's worth and i'll broadcast my opinion all over the earth because it's this week in science this week in science this week in science science science, science. science. this week in science this week in science this week in science, 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 I've got one disclaimer and it shouldn't be news. That what I say may not represent your views, but I've done the calculations and I've got a plan. If you listen to the science, you may just yet understand that we're not trying to threaten your philosophy. We're just trying to save the world from jeopardy. And this week in science is coming your way So everybody listen to everything we say And if you use our method instead of rolling a die We may rid the world of toxoplasma God the eye Cause it's this 
Week in Science. This Week in Science. This Week in Science. 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 This Week in Science. This Week in Science. This Week in Science. 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 Got a laundry list of items I want to address From stopping global hunger to dredging Loch Ness I'm trying to promote more rational thought And I'll try to answer any question you've got So how can I ever see the changes I seek When I can only set up shop one hour a week This week in science is coming your way You better just listen to what we say And if you've learned anything from the words that we said Then please just remember it's all in your head Cause it's this week in science This week in science This week in science Science, science, science science. science. This week in science This week in science This week in science Science, 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 science This week in science This week in science this week in science, 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 this week in science. We're now in the after show, everyone. There's so much after show. You know what I'm doing right now? What? Logging into a Steam account. What's that? <laughs> so we're playing games. <gasps> it is for games. Which game? A game called Among Us. So, is there any way to play that on a computer, or do you have to have? Do you have to do it on a mobile know. device? Um, because I couldn't find. You can do it on a mobile device easily with a computer. I think you need to have Steam. Okay, so I'm going to grab my iPad. Hold on. Okay. So I don't know how this happened. I think Blair might have suggested it. <laughs> as our after show fun tonight to play among us Oops, where's the ipad everybody. here's the ipad there's the ipad and let's see if this works did i get it oh ryan i'm Android. downloading among us on the ipad can't read let's see if i can do that again i just said i'm downloading um, among us on the ipad perfect. he he's like awesome I'll play that. Okay, bye. Go save some lives. Have good work, Brian. He says have good work. Oh, thank you. I say be safe. Yeah, be safe. Be safe. That's the most important thing. God. E, riding huh? to school on the ice on an e-bike. Yikes. Be safe, child. Be safe. Okay. Okay. So now I don't use Steam. So now I have to na navigate myself through the Steam to find the game. Okay. So um, you don't have the you don't have the pay version of this, do you? I'm sure. I don't know. There it is. Oh wait, do I have to install it on my computer? Can't I just play it through the Steam thing? <laughs> Justin, do you have a paid account for Among Us? Because if any of the people playing have no, one, then get, uh, ads. You, you get ads. There might be a little ad delay. Wait, what? You get There's... ads in the game if you if um nobody has the paid version. Oh. That's fine. Oh, free ad. No, oh my God. Okay. Darn it. So I guess the question is, should I try to join the stream 
for my iPad so that I can screen share so people can watch? Or are you going to try to, do, you're trying to do that? I'm going to try and, yeah, stream the game from my end of things. <laughs> maybe we, Carol Ann says, maybe we have to do this another time. <laughs> <laughs> I've already down. I've already. I have Steam. Hi, Sadie. All right. Do you want to play uh, Among Us? Uh, okay, I'm going to give out a code to Wait, any of those. Okay. Hold on. Any of those ready? I've decided to host the so, game. Jump right in. Anybody, Full disclaimer if for anybody's me. out there. If anyone's out there and wants to play with us, <laughs> you can join us on Among Us. So I, I'd never played before and I played the free play for a couple of minutes today. So I understand like how to do things in the ship, but, um, I don't understand any part, any other part of the game. So <laughs> I'll figure it out. I understand it's like mafia and you can call an emergency meeting if you think you know who's the, who mm -hmm. the murderer is or whatever. So I feel, I feel like I got, as long as I don't. Oh. I mean, I could be the murderer, but as long as I don't become right. the murderer, I should be fine. U A N I F F. <laughs> U is an umbrella. A is an apple. N is in Nancy. I is in Hold mm, on. if, and then F F as in Friday. Say, say it Friday. again. U A N I F F. Settings. I have to enter my name. Nobody's going to be able to hear the um, music and sound effects that I can hear. Ah, there's Sensor Badger. Oh. That's me. Oh, hey, Badger. Well, I have to. Ooh, how'd you get your fun outfit? So uh, tap on the little computer that's highlighted, and you can pick a hat. <gasps> this is so cool. <laughs> Are you you're excited? You get to do your, <laughs> you to do your little... little character. Yeah. I want to figure out how to play it without making it take over my whole screen. Because I can't do screen share if I can't freaking see everything. Can I find it? U-A-N-I-F-F. It can be in all caps. I don't know if it has to be. It forced it to be in all caps for me. Oh, Is anyone man. else playing Among Us? There. There. Now I look like a badger. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> uh, oh, you got a full body suit. How'd you manage that? I just matched the color to the ears. Oh. Hot Rod said, I don't want to right now. <laughs> That's no fine. Play. You don't I have don't to. want to play right now. Apparently, <laughs> I've played for nine hours. Wow. This is not my this is not my account. I'm borrowing an account. I really like your hat, Justin. <laughs> it's really good. Thank you. I can't figure out how to get in without. Is it stream? I'm doing this on a phone. Yeah. So Kiki, I could, um, like I said, I could try to join from my iPad as a fourth person and screen share. Oh, I wonder if you, see, I'm having, I'm just, I, I mean, I've got, I can open it and get into it, but I don't know how to not make it take over my whole screen. Mm. Identity four is too brain dead. <sighs> People are tired. Science is awesome. It just took over my whole screen again. It's so funny. I wonder if I can, no. K 
Can you screen share the application before you start the game? So, Where's that? Uh, I have to say, this, that was a very fun meandering down memory lane. It was. That was those, a lot of fun. Uh, old show blast outs. That was really awesome. It's only me and Blair in the game. I guess I guess nobody wants to play this game. <laughs> so sad. This is very, very sad. This is an online gaming fail. MMORPG fail. I thought online games are something people always wanted to play. What happened? Uh, as my seven-year-old likes to point out, it takes a while for people to join. So just be patient. Hmm. Oh, I've also made it private. Maybe I should make it public. Then we can get it. No, pr I mean they public means we... anyone can join. Here. Yeah, we're gonna have to do it just to get enough bodies. Hold on. What's the minimum? Minimum. Can you Three see it or now? Four? Yes. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> U A N I F F. Jeez, Sadie. <laughs> so online. You okay? Host, okay. right? Go, private. Uh, go Enter private. code. Okay. U Say it again. U A N. U A N. I F F. I F F. Okay. But so this is important. Yeah. Justin and I shouldn't look at this screen now, right? No, no. It's fine. Nothing. Because if worry she about. if she's the imposter, then like you yeah, no, you yeah, don't. That's her bad. Because we'll see her screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's once the game starts. Okay. It's once the game starts. So let's see. I need a hat. Of course, I need a hat. Badger's just running around here like a crazy <laughs> person. <laughs> What's Badger doing? Should I have a, a little beanie? <laughs> I should have a Viking hat. Uh, I feel like that would be appropriate. I think I should have a Viking. Or should, yeah, no, I think the Viking hat. I almost chose the horns. I liked those. Or maybe the alien. Oh, that's a good one. Maybe I want an alien hat on my head. Oh, I can have a pet. Oh, I, I have can't. To buy a pet. Oh, you oh, can so buy a pet? pets. I don't I think have, I have pets I have available. A pet. What kind of pants do I want? I yeah, I think Kiki, you might have the paid version. I yeah. might have the paid version, which would mean available. I like pink. Pink's pink. Pink's pretty awesome. Maybe I'll be blue. Nah, purple. No, pink. Pink is the best. Oh, this is a total <laughs> fail. We're the only ones in here. I have to we have to have like 10 game. people, right? Uh, hang on. I, I don't think I can change. <gasps> there is somebody in here. Somebody's here who came to join us. Control Alt. Oh, Hello, there's some Control. people. Oh, you made it public. That's why. I made it public. Uh, so that we can all right. Get, fair uh, enough. Bodies to hit the floor. I have a dog running around with me. I'm very busy. Yeah, there's a lot going on with you. <laughs> I've got a lot going on. <laughs> All right. We're going to wait uh, two minutes. Uh, and we'll play we'll one public game. Despite how many. Yeah. Regardless. <laughs> so if, you, if you can get in, get in. Code for the room is uh, now public, but the code is still U-A-N-I-F-F. -F. <laughs> more are, more to go. People are going to drop out like, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Do I want no... Go away. What are they saying? <laughs> Who's Kat? I think Katsuki did it. Oh, no. Katsuki Already? looks sus. No, Ninja looks sus. All right, we're at six out of ten. Ninja's totally sus. God, you need ten people? We don't need. I think need. I need we to get rid of this anytime. dog. That dog is going to be a dead giveaway. This dog is just too much. He's going to slow you down. <laughs> we got too much going on <laughs> over here. <laughs> Why? I, I'm taking him around for run, runs around the space, giving him exercise. 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, somebody's asking for the code in the Your YouTube team. chat room. I've said it a bunch of times. Uh, U A N I F F. There's only one spot left. Here we go. U A N I F F. We're going to get another person and we're going to start a game. We're going to have to figure out who did it. Oh, oh no. wait. So you can't look at the screen I'm share. When it when it starts, don't mm -hmm. look at the screen share because you'll know who the okay. if if like it'll say what I see. You know whether you are. Okay. Right. You've got to hide your I, Okay, you got to hide the feed. I'm going to hide the window. Hide your feed, close your feed. Until it gets past that screen. It's really complicated to get back to it. Who is this person talking? No, about? Justin, just close your, just minimize the window, the StreamYard window. Uh, just I, it's don't not look me. at StreamYard for anything. two seconds. No, I'm saying to you. Oh, oh here it comes. So you can't Shh. see it. Don't look. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, now mm -hmm. I have to remember how to run. Oh, wait. Ah, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this either. Ah! Jeez. Ah! What happened? <laughs> Who died? <laughs> A bunch of people Two. died. Wow. <laughs> Who is the imposter? Let's I don't know. see. Katsuki says purple. I didn't see anything. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> purple says, why me? Hmm. Who am I going to vote for? Um, I don't know. Justin, that's hella funny. <laughs> Wasn't me, hundred <laughs> percent. If not, then me. No, oh, I just don't know. I just know it wasn't I me. Know. I don't have anybody else who I find. But, uh, there's so much time left for voting. Are we done voting now? Come on, people. It ends in a minute. Come on, rookie. Come on, Too rookie, long. vote. Come on, rookie, vote. Rookie's just hanging out, not voting. Vote. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is the election or something. Vote! All the votes <laughs> must done. be counted. Really? Every time? <laughs> it seems like it would take too long. Just sell. Is me. Vote, vote, vote. Yeah. Rookie. <laughs> Looking for cookies. Okay, rookie. I don't have any cookies. No cookies. Ooh. Can I kick people out? Trying. Kiki, did you unvote? What? No. So you took a, your I voted sticker isn't there anymore. I oh. voted. What happened? Did I oh, mess geez. up? Uh -oh. I honestly what don't happened? know. I don't know how to pull it. A weird screen. Oh, no one was ejected. No one, no one was, was ejected. ejected. Two imposters. Two imposters. Oh, so how? Ah. I don't know how to. Whoa. Oh, hey, there's a map. Look at that. Oh, crap. How to get rid of that? <laughs> Is that blood? Is that blood? <laughs> what are you guys doing? Just I hanging out, know. huh? I don't know how to do anything. This is the most boring game ever. Do I have a thing here? I think I don't know how to use the controls. Oh, look at that. There we go. 
No. Hmm. I don't understand. I'm stuck. I'm stuck in a this room. Is like a confusing map. Yeah, this map is rough. I just got a dog. I need to get rid of this dog. God, this is a lot of dead ends in this map. Oh, I see. You have to open. Ah! Unintentional steam bath. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I really. This is a gigantic map. Ooh, it's snowy. Maybe because there's so many of us? How the heck? Hmm. Where am I? Oh, no. All right. Nothing. Everything's fine. I can't say what just happened. You. Where are you? Oh, I'm 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 Ooh. I'm just walking everywhere now. Everything's under control. <sighs> oh, I'm way up there. Darn it. This stupid space key. Ah! Someone oh. reported a dead a body. A lot of people For died. Real. Oh no, Justin, you're dead. I'm still here in spirit only. <laughs> He's a spirit. This is lame. I don't know how to use the controls on my keyboard. It's not working. It's making me sad. I had so many opportunities. Blair, avenge me. I will try. Okay. I uh, whoa. Ujiwal is oh left, not dead. Two out of the five. Forty percent of the remaining crew are suspect. God. I think oh Ricky. <gasps> we win. Oh damn. Damn. How did we lose? What happened? Uh, we all got killed. But I didn't get killed. <laughs> what happened? Uh, there's more of them than there are. Of oh. Them. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm getting out of there. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Yay! Control Atlas, we won! I won by being completely <laughs> unable to play the game. I had so many opportunities. I'm like next to people, nobody's around. I'm like, I can't figure out how to kill anybody. <laughs> oh, darn. Oh my god. <laughs> so I I had trouble with the control. Awesome. Like I would get up to one of those like highlight. <laughs> highlighted items but i wouldn't be able yeah, to get my body right where you need to too. be well i i could figure mm -hmm. out what i needed to do but yeah i couldn't get my i couldn't get my little guy to the right position to activate the panel the whole thing i think maybe so, it's not meant to be on the ipad maybe it's too every, big of a thing i was trying to use my mouse and it didn't want to work i was clicking and dragging i was clicking i was and then I just had to use the arrows on my keyboard. And then every time I hit the space bar, all it did was pop the map up. So it was not doing what I wanted it to do at all. Well done, Control Atlas. <sighs> that was Control a Atlas. slaughter. Yes. You know, I think this is my, my strategy from here on out playing games is yeah, just... Love win by not knowing what the heck is going on <laughs> you're like that member of the group project that doesn't do anything <laughs> gets the a i got it i won yeah. <laughs> that was uh, fun. carol ann says i keep thinking you guys are drinking at 8 a.m <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, a stylus often, would work. Yeah. I'm often drinking at 8 a.m. Sometimes it's coffee. Uh, water. Sometimes it's Juice. water. Sometimes it's neither of those things. Just depends All on right. where 8 a.m. falls in the world. Mm -hmm. Bad, Kiki, bad. I know. Bad. It was bad playing. I'll figure it out, though. 
I want to figure out how not to have it take over my screen because that would make it easier to pop back and forth between screen sharing and not screen sharing and figure out the controls here and then we can play another time and then Mm -hmm. because Gord said he can't play tonight but he has the game and would like to Mm -hmm. identity (laughs) says this game is confusing I bet we could do it again we can also just um, do it Mm -hmm. we're not on air We could do it when we're not on air. I know Gord is like, what? Twist is gaming? This is weird. We're gaming poorly. I I mean, I think that could be that could be our whole shtick is yeah. gaming poorly. I feel like that's what got us into trouble that one time. <laughs> right? <laughs> gaming we poorly. Don't, we don't need to do that again. Or perhaps gaming very well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Anyway. Oh my Anything. goodness! I couldn't even see that. I it was sad. I couldn't. <laughs> Gord says no. Gaming poorly is the norm on Twitch. All right. Well, that makes me feel better. I, I was sad. I couldn't see the chat in here, and I would love to see. I wanted to see what everyone was talking about while we were playing. Because goodness knows, I need one more distraction while I don't know what's going on. I don't think it's Windows only, but it, yeah, for desktop, you have to have Steam or you have to have... It's it's on Android, isn't it? OS and Android, I think. Mm-hmm. I got it through the uh, iOS, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. We- yeah, I I did a little Googling, and I think oh, technically through, through the actual company that makes the game, I think you have to have iOS. But I think there's somebody who like built it into a website or something, but I didn't click Mm -hmm. on it because I thought it might eat my computer. (laughs) Don't want it to eat your computer. Yeah, I I have installed this now on my computer and I'm afraid. (laughs) If if you haven't already been hacked, you just will be later. It'll happen eventually. It's all a matter of time. Your robot can eavesdrop on you. You have no... There's no sanctuary anymore. That's what that, that's what I'm thinking. There is there is no sanctuary. No. Everyone everywhere, they're spying. It's all spies all the time. That's good. We could yeah, we could figure out other games too and stream science games. We can mm-hmm. stream and talk about science. We need to make a science game. That'd be fun. I made one tonight, guys. I know. Science trivia. That was fun. Science trivia. That was a lot of fun. Science trivia is always fun. Always fun. I'm going to close this. (laughs) Close that up. Bloop. 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 Bloop closing windows but now i know i can stream the video gamings through this computer at least my perspective of it i have some sciency board games i don't know very much about video games um, so like something them. I've played a bunch with friends. It's not sciency, but um, are you familiar with the game Code Names? No. Um, well, there's an online version of it, and so basically, like, if we were on the same team, I would say like Animal Three, and so there might be three words on this board of like four by four of words that might relate to that clue. And so you'd have to guess them. Mm -hmm. So like each team has a set of clues that they have to get their teammates to guess. And there's one word that's like um, uh, the booby trapped word and you auto lose. So you don't want them to accidentally guess that one. Oh, okay. So you try and guess them, get them to guess everything except for that one. Right. Right. Yeah. I've got something for you here. Mm. I built something.
something that'll change the world. I'll win the Nobel Prize and maybe even a girl. It doesn't need a battery or gasoline. My electronical, mechanical, perpetual motion machine. Everyone said that it couldn't be done. It only took me a year with only limited funds. The people at Home Depot all know my name. They didn't know what I was building. They thought I was insane. I care about the air. Two thousand eight, Unbalanced Wheel, who wrote our theme song, wrote Perpetual Motion Machine. Mm. Alessandro Troiano was his name. Then there was then there was this one. Oh, let's see if I can get that one. Hold on. The biosphere is feeling down. The science and nature won't kid ya. The new nomenclature to diagnose nature is the technical term chlamydia. Great talk. Chlamydia, chlamydia. It's a pathology for ecology. It's chlamydia. Mother Nature's layers and fossils tell us her story in detail. Study physical laws and not Santa Claus, and she'll give you a piece of her tail. An eon of coal oil and natural gas in a few hundred years depletes. Hydrocarbons were leaking, geologically speaking, got laid between the sheets. Chlamydia, chlamydia. <laughs> that one's a good one. Good old songs from old compilation CDs. I love them. So good. So, so good. Are you still playing, Justin? Yeah. He's like, I'm still playing Among Us. You don't know what you're doing. Oh, I bailed. <laughs> I bailed. I bailed. I, I didn't feel like I was being able to multitask all the things. Do you see this? With my interface. Oh, your dog is dead That's back me. there. <laughs> Did you finish your champers? I mean, I drank half a bottle. It's time for bed. <sighs> nice. <laughs> I have to work tomorrow. Oops. What? That's right. Blair has to work in Whoa. the morning, like so many people. I have to wake up early, take this fart head for a jog. <laughs> <laughs> a poop brain, you yeah. mean. Yeah. Then <laughs> I gotta feed this poop brain and this poop brain. <laughs> No one on his way to save lives. I got to feed that poop brain, too. Then I got to go to work. What time do you have to be at work these days? Well, I don't have to be anywhere. <laughs> I have to open the laptop at 9 o'clock. Oh, okay. That's not terrible. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I've uh, I've been going to some of the parks to check them out, but now I think I have to cool it because we just moved to the purple tier. Yeeks. I don't even know what weird terminology you're using. Hey, uh, I'm cheers. I'm sorry. To uh, Twist yeah, uh, 800. Go. I don't want to say 800 more, but. That's a lot. That's 15 But I'm not, more I'm not years. doing anything else on a Wednesday evening. So. Unless we start doing shorter, more frequent episodes. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's something to consider. 15 years 
years from now. We'll see. (laughs) To the future, to more episodes, to more fun. We just got to keep going long enough more science. until all of our children can take our place in Twist. Oh, they're, they're ready. They've been ready. Over here. Oh. I, could, I could fill all three slots with children. Mine doesn't exist yet. So yeah, you got to hurry up. Your dog's I'm working out. on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, in, it's in the plans. It's on the map. They noted your red cup. Where are you? You've got your uh, microphone. Are you in a permanent, semi-permanent place? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, off the road. You're off the road. I'm off the road for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna be uh, having an address. I'm gonna be mailed to. It's gonna be really weird. It'll be very wonderful, very strange compared to your uh, recent months. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the wonderful aspect of it, but um, <laughs> I'll be very Good brick enough. and mortar oriented for a while. At least so until I get a vaccine, and then yeah. uh, so are most road. of us. Open yeah. road. Yeah. What's the yeah. status of the um, bus since you were away for pretty long? Uh, the bus is fine. Uh, I just got 400 pounds of steel uh, delivered a couple days ago. Actually, tomorrow my big job is to go. I got delivered in the rain. It was just an unfortunate. The one day it rained was when I took my steel delivery. Uh, I have it covered, but I, I, I basically I'm going to have to go and sand metal tomorrow uh, and then spray paint it with primer. And then begins uh, the order of operations, which requires the roof rack to go on before the installation of the ceiling, and then the ceiling itself, and then that's the power that feeds the other things from the solar panels. And the, so, uh, yeah, this week is metal orgy craft mm-hmm. stuff. Got to get the, got to get all of those steel tubes up on top of the bus. So I have a platform to place solar panels and a little roof deck that can hold propane and an air conditioner and a little bit of storage. Awesome. I'm sure right now out there it's getting pretty cold. Nah, it's fine. Not yet. It's during California, Century Valley is it was a warm day today. Oh. It was a it was a sweat uh day here in Almost December. Sun was shining today. Plenty warm. Yeah. That's not what it's like here. (laughs) So last week in Daly City, San Francisco area, it was so cold. I was under a heated blanket and I had a space heater pointed at me, which like I recognize like it's all relative, right? But I just mean in terms of Bay Area cold, it was like 30 degrees colder than it's been. Yeah. Uh, no, last week. Oh, yeah. Last week, there was two days uh, here that hit uh, slightly bo- below freezing overnight. Yeah, it was like 35 here, which is like Oh, that, that was warm. That was warm compared to the Central Valley. It got below 30. Yeah, but, but I'm saying <sighs> for San Francisco Daily City, that's insanely yes, cold. Yeah. Yes, it is. And uh, then all of a sudden, over the weekend, it got hot again. Well, yeah, she was asking, will you guys, will you guys like gonna take the vaccine or what? Like, <laughs> like an, an Apple, Apple update, see what messes up before you download. Uh, no. So the here's the thing: the first vaccine you have access to, take it. But the, most people will not have access to a vaccine Either until of for a while, well, for a long time. So you will act. We will actually know whether or not mm-hmm. things get messy. Uh, you know, because before I'm not. Well, I'm if not, I may, I'm not a friend. <laughs> my loved friend. one will be getting it right I know. away. I know. So, Frontline so. healthcare workers are probably going to be getting these vaccines right away, but. I really the thing, think they're here's, good. They're going to be fine. They are totally the going to well, be fine. We don't know that. You take, that what, be, you take whatever you get. That could not be get. true. But here, yeah. here's the thing. 
if you have the opportunity to take one, do not pass it by right. in the hopes of getting the other because that might take a, enough time for you to actually catch mm -hmm. COVID, which yeah. by all accounts is worse than anything that has occurred from the vaccine. Mm -hmm. So and the we first one you have, have access to, as to what we have. is yeah. the one worth taking yep. uh, in this yep. scenario. Yep. Hot Rod is asking if I'm doing a compost toilet. No, because they don't compost. They stink. They, no, they, uh, I don't know if they stink. They're diverters, so they separate the one from the two, which is how you get the sewage smell. Uh, I went a different route for uh, an emergency toilet, not as a standalone. I did a dry uh, system, which is basically like a, a Mylar bag. That, it's basically a diaper genie. Uh, <laughs> Levio. Uh, because I don't want to really rely on it. I want to be in a situation where I don't have to use it. But in emergency, I want it to be an option. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, so would you park at like campgrounds and stuff? Is that what you're thinking? No, I probably can't. Well, I can't camp at uh, RV parks because you have to be within a certain number of years of an RV and have all these standards that converted bus vehicle thing you can't do. But yeah, I could go on to uh, campground, yeah. public land, BML land, that sort of thing. Actually, in the city of Davis, you're allowed to stay in your RV six out of seven days. But you can't stay seven days out of the week. Hmm. Huh. So interesting. So uh, I actually need to make a second bus RV. So I stay three or four days, five days, whatever, in one, and then switch to the other. Because they want, apparently, the city of Davis is trying to incentivize having more RVs on city streets by making this odd thing where you can't stay seven days a week so i i'm gonna have to get another one after this one immediately in order to what if you just uh, camp for that seventh day <laughs> like just no uh, i'm in the tent <laughs> so so the the idea is <laughs> i'm not in the rv i'm in the tent right yeah. so the idea is it will have enough uh it'll have enough solar to infinite empower anything i need to do right uh uh but water wise uh, we're looking at uh, 70 gallons of, of water, which will mostly be for cleaning, showering, and dishwashing, which at 70 should be 30. No, not 30. Uh, at 70, it would be oh, about, about eight to... Eight to nine uh, days of showering and dishwashing, somewhere in that range. So it'll have probably a 10 day away from water sources uh, survivability. Um, nice. Justin, you should just be, be a cool. camp host. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. I should be compost? Thank no, you. No, camp, a camp host. Camp oh, what's that host. Mean? It's, it means that you pull your bus up to a, um, a campsite and you have to like sell people firewood and stuff. But otherwise, you basically just live there for like months at a time. You have access to all the hookups and a, and a shower and bathroom and sometimes there's Wi-Fi. You have to talk to people, though. Yeah, you have to talk to people. Oh, that's, that's the fine part. Yeah. I was just trying to figure out... <laughs> So I would love it. I would love it. Like, I could live underneath the stars and the uh, high Sierras or the low deserts or the coastals or the wherevers. Uh, I like being slightly outside of the reach of most of society. I'm, like, fine with that. Uh, yeah, I think, you know... Uh, mostly, though, this the, the whole idea of this, the... the origin story behind this was i tried to buy a church that's right <laughs> i was gonna buy a church uh but the problem was to buy this old church in this tiny small rural town you couldn't live there because the church didn't have all the facilities to cons be considered housing um so but you could add them to it 
you could add like the kitchen and the, you know, the, sh- the shower and the bath. You could add those and then make it uh, habitable. But I couldn't, I, at the time I was like, how am I going to afford the rent I'm paying plus the mortgage on the property plus all the cost of doing the rebuild? That's uh, too much. And I found out kind of late into the process, actually you can, you can park, if you own the property, you can park a, a uh, habitable vehicle like an RV or a trailer or something like this mobile home type of a thing. You can park that on the property while you're doing the rebuilding, which mm-hmm. would eliminate the rent aspect of it. So it's just the mortgage and the, the uh, build that cost. Okay. That's doable. Then I looked at the cost of RVs. G-g-g-g. Wow. Th- that's more than the property. How is mm-hmm. that possible? Like that's crazy expensive. Okay. So I got to look at an old RV. Uh, how do you fix an old RV? Well, a lot of times they have problems with the fiberglass. And how do you do that? How do you fix old broken fiberglass and all these other systems? So then I went down that like a YouTube rabbit hole of that. And it came up. Schooly. Converting school buses. These are things made out of metal. I don't know anything about working with fiberglass. I know how to patch a hole in metal. I can do a little welding and I definitely can bolt stuff together. That seems like totally sensible. Uh, and absolutely cheap. Uh, I bought a school bus for 900 bucks. It's a 25 foot, uh, six window, uh, short bus. It's a long, longest version of the long short, short bus. bus. Yeah. The longest version, 25 foot, 900 bucks. And, uh, everything runs and everything is, uh, easy to work on. Yeah, I, I, no leaks. In, well, there was a leak in the roof over back where the air conditioner had been uh, converted. Also, by the way, whoever uh, was going to the Bakersfield School District between the years of 1994 and 2018 and lost a D&D figurine. You have uh, it. <laughs> I found it. Your hero's seen better days. But it definitely got wedged in a really oddly, like, freak accident location on the bus that it was even preserved there. But uh, missing an arm. Sorry. I, but uh, what, what kind of survived. character was it? Could you tell? Some sort of, like, bard orc type thing. I'm not really a bard sure. orc? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, or maybe a half orc. I mean, to be it's honest. A, it's I, an orc with a harp. Orc. Mm-hmm. singing orc songs yeah. you know how orcs have a proclivity for music and <laughs> they they much more so than you would expect unless you listen yeah. to airs blandable a- animal corner you know which they've been purple. which by the way is racist There's animal you house bring orcs on the animal corner and not halflings because they definitely deserve but <laughs> uh but yeah so by the time i got this all figured out and had this this school bus to to turn into a house car uh, uh, to turn into a recreational vehicle. The property I initially was doing all this for had long sold. And so it, uh, and then COVID happened. Uh, so I ended up staying uh, four or five months out of the last, since ever, all this began on this, this bus, as I was yeah. renovating it out and in uh, on a farm in the middle of the central Valley. Gorgeous. Uh, away from the noise, the, the light pollution of the city. Yeah, there are so many stars that you can see without a telescope. It is phenomenal. You don't have to go that far from a city. Or Blair's got like city light pollution and fog. So she doesn't even know their what stars look like. She no, has what no are idea. they? She looks up at the sky and it's just gray because of it's all the just, fog. Yeah, it's, just know that the Blair's sky never actually is seen fog. Star. <laughs> no, she, what are stars? Yeah. That's why she's always so confused when we start having space stories. <laughs> what are what even are stars anyway? What I is space? Thing, is it wet? I'm confused. I hear this story about a day star. <laughs> I don't even get to see that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so anyway, I'm, uh, the plan is at some point to buy a little piece of land park the bus on to either renovate or build a house or a homestead or a science island or uh, nice. or or uh, use it uh, for a weekend warrior type outings 
cool. It's going to be great. Do they Justin, have Among um, Us out there? He doesn't even have internet out there. <laughs> um, when uh, when COVID's over, you could definitely run that thing as an Airbnb. Yeah, yeah I've seen oh, I've seen yeah. less. I've seen much less uh, mm -hmm. being rented out. That's absolutely yep. true. People rent anything. <sighs> oh, good. Carol Ann's getting, getting people to not install streetlights. Or if you do, if they do want to make sure that they've got specially lights that aren't pointing, allowing a lot of light pollution to go up. So, yeah. So, work. Carol, what I would recommend to your neighbors is a sort of intermediary Airbnb, Airbnb bus. What? Airbnb bus. Airbnb bus. Yeah. Uh, Carol, what I would recommend to your neighbors is like uh, invite them to install as much reflective tape and yeah. reflective signage as they like. You know, it's one thing that's interesting about most vehicles, they pretty much all come with headlights. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and if you're not if worried you have, about safety, if you have reflective signage all over the place, nobody will be confused about where the road is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice Well, idea. even if you have the lights that point down that don't mess with seeing stars, it still <laughs> causes problems with wildlife. Yeah. With uh, insects, with mo uh, uh, moths, but also bats. It messes mm -hmm. with everything coyotes, yeah, raccoons. It messes everybody up. That's not good. All the uh, nocturnals are like, not a fan. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. And some of the diurnals wake up and they're like, is it daytime? I'm confused. Can we be a gaming channel now that we gamed once? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Hot Rod. Uh, so the compost and toilets are very expensive. And yes, you could get away with a bucket and peat moss with some sawdust and and almost have the exact same effect. It doesn't actually compost. There's not enough time for the composting to take place while it's on your bus. That's a much longer process that needs to take care of uh, that take place after the fact. Most people end up flushing from their compost toilets if they're on the road. So it's kind of pointless there too. Plus they take electricity, plus the, 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 Thanks, the, the. Gord. Uh, I didn't want to do a black water tank just because I don't think that the bus would have necessarily access to RV parks to begin with, which is where you can usually unload those things. So I'm with a dry thing, diaper genie, you take it to the dump and you drop it off with the rest of the trash. It'll You're compost done. in a thousand years. It'll be fine. <laughs> a thousand years of compost. I mean, you also like the whole idea of needing water to like to make poop soup is like silly. It's it's all silly. You don't need it. No. What a waste. Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> we're oh, pros for, now. That's pooping right. into water. <laughs> it's yeah. just weird. Like, why do we do that? Plop. Yeah, it the is the sound weird. it makes. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's like sound. People don't want to smell it. It's for it's for smell okay. and also is it for smell? For making it go Do down the pipes. It's really for smell? Okay. It's it's also here's for the thing because this transport. is the thing that, like there was a water filtration what? vacuum cleaner for many years that the I think it was called the Rainbow that people were buying because water filtration. If if, if you've ever tooted in the bathtub. <laughs> You know that water filtration is a myth. Yeah, that's pretty fair. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't do anything to filter scent. It 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 does work a, a little bit as a plug. I mean, if you've ever had um the U of your of your plumbing get off kilter and things come back up, the scent mm -hmm from your mm -hmm. pipes come back up Ugh. yeah hot rod is saying compost toilets don't use plug. electricity uh you know all of the ones they do have an exhaust fan to remove moisture yeah well that's the electricity i was talking about they have an exhaust yeah. fan it has something has to run that there was a comment a long time ago about things warming up and record month in norway carol ann said mm -hmm. 
And I saw a story today, a couple, it was a, a couple of places about it's getting so warm that places that are normally frozen over and lakes and rivers that are normally frozen over that people c consider safe for fishing or ice skating or walking on are no longer safe. And one of the casualties, the collateral damage of a warming world is that uh, people are falling through the ice and drowning more often. So if that. you're in a cold place and you're used to going out on the ice, just be extra careful forever now. That's scary. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's, I, yeah, the, fa <laughs> the fact that it, it's enough now that it's like, we're writing articles about this. This yeah, is a news story. I mean, okay, just to be, just to be completely transparent and fair. A pee trap. Thank you, the marked. Yes. The people who have been walking on the ice thinking like it was fine and normal probably should have fallen through a long time ago. I mean, you should. Like, That's like it's a real always West Coast been attitude. Dangerous. Justin. You just Such a West Coast care. attitude. <laughs> <laughs> this is the attitude of somebody who has no clue what frozen water is like. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Hold, hold up. Hold up. The uh, the pond out front of Fredericksburg slot in uh, Fredericksburg, Denmark, okay. uh, froze over. Actually, the parts of the, uh, not the North Sea, it's more the East Sea. Uh, it's not kind of got exactly that froze over, but but the the little pond moat lake in front of uh, Fredericksburg Castle froze over. So I walked out onto it, and it was fine until when I was walking back near shore. The near shore part I got to got was getting thinner and thinner, mm -hmm. and the ice was starting to crack underneath my shoes, and I realized. It's just getting thinner the closer I get to shore. So the closer I am to safety, the more danger I'm actually in because the ice is thinnest <laughs> near the shoreline. How am I getting off this, this iceberg? And then the other one jump? was, uh, the, yeah, no, I just ran for it. I went, I kind of went backtracked a little to where the thicker ice seemed to be. And then I ran yeah, for you it. You got onto it somehow. The last foot or two I got wet, but. Uh, in Greenland, I'll never forget. First of all, I noticed it was one o'clock in the morning. Uh, rest of the planet time, 24 hour sun. Greenland doesn't care. And out there on the shoreline, what had been a frozen bay of, of, of uh, sea, like salt sea that was frozen. Had a couple of days of rain. Everything had broken up in these little icebergs. Everything was floating. One, two o'clock in the morning, the village children of Kanak Kanak were out there hopping. No Seeing thanks. How far out they could get on these little ice pads. What? Starting at the shore. I'm talking about seven to 14 year olds jumping from little Ugh. ice floaty thing to ice floaty thing to see how far out they could go. What? And the adults watching from the shore are like, nice jump. Well, good balance. Way to not fall into the freezing ice water of the bay. Oh, my gosh. As a parent of children who aren't allowed to tie their shoes, lest they get a string burn. <laughs> California parent overprotective as heck helicopter is all he uh -huh. I'm like amazed not only that the children are being allowed to do this but that they're all doing really well they're doing fine they were just doing amazing jobs at navigating that's amazing ice. all right I don't think I would I don't think I would uh, be a good Norwegian parent Danish uh -uh. parent nope Greenlandic, uh, Greenlandic uh, parent. Inuit. Whatever. Yeah. You have to be an Inuit parent in this particular. Okay. Specific. Yeah. No, <laughs> definitely not. Uh, but the yes, the Inuits, uh, live and die by the ice. So yeah. Yeah. There's a different, up on the ice. uh, assessment a different... yeah. of risk in the Arctic. Culture's good. That's fascinating. What a neat I mean, story. I mean, uh, to, to flip the script a little bit, I think most Inuits, would freak out 
watching uh, an American child cross an intersection <laughs> on their way to school. Oh my god! You know what I mean? Like, great. there's so many cars. Those are driven by humans. That's unpredictable. It's not like the ice in which you can rely on the buoyancy and the size of the. Right? Like they know ice, like we know traffic navigation. Yeah. It's a just different, different uh, <laughs> upbringing. All right. It's 1130. Yeah, it's That's time for me. Yeah. It's time to, to call it. Identity 4 has to be at work at, what? scrolling backwards, scrolling, 630 AM. That's early. That's All early, right. Identity 4. I guess four. it's at that time. Uh, Blair. Say goodnight, Blair. Mr. Runner Dog. Good night, Blair. Say good night, Justin. Good night, Justin. Good night, Kiki. Kiki. Good night, everyone. I look forward to seeing you all back again next week for the first of another century. <laughs> Hundo. <laughs> Hundred episodes of This Week in Science. So much more yet to come. So much more yet to come. Thank you so much for being here tonight. It was super fun. And I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care, everyone. Stay healthy.